Okay, well, first you gotta call it to order. Oh, I, I will we'll call the meeting to order at 522. Madam Clerk, please call the roll and our members remember to please give the location of where you are um, when uh, the clerk calls on you. So it'll give me, give me a second after each name to be writing that down. Um, and if you can have a camera on, that would be helpful just in case something goes awry and you need to give me a thumbs up or something. But anyway, uh, for attendance, Commissioners Gershenson. Here, here, in, muted. here in Bloomfield Township. Thank you. Gingell. Here in Orion Township. Hoffman. Here in Sunny Highland. Highland today? Okay. <laughs> Jackson. Here in beautiful Southfield, Michigan. Kokenderfer. Here in Rochester Hills. Kowal. Here in White Lake. Week. Poon? Here in Troy. Thank you. Long? Here at Commerce Township. Lubes? Here in Clawson, Michigan. Markham? Here in Novi. McGilvray? Here in Madison Heights. Middleton? Here in Independence Township. Miller? Here in Farmington, Michigan, in the Miller Compound. Nelson? Here at Waterford Township. Powell? Here at Pontiac. Corals? Here, uh, Southfield, Michigan. Who is Here, Oxford Township. Tom. Here, Bloomfield Township. Wiper. Here, South Bay, Michigan. Woodward. Here, Royal Oak, Michigan. And Zach, is Zach here? Here, Huntington Woods, Michigan. Thank you. All right, you have a quorum. All right, thank you, Madam Clerk. Uh, that will formally kick off uh, the December 7th, 2020 meeting of the Oakland County Board of Commissioners. Um, next up on the agenda, we have the invocation um, to be led uh, this uh, evening by, uh, by the Honorable Michael Spiz uh, from Oxford. Uh, Commissioner Spiz, I'll give you the floor and then I'm, I'm happy to help you lead the, the pledge. Thank you, Mr. Chair. I'm honored to have the opportunity to give the last invocation of 2020 and of this term. With that, I'd like to invite everyone to please bow your heads. Heavenly Father, we thank you for bringing us together today and watching over us throughout this difficult year. Please continue to watch over us all, especially Shelly, Helene, Nancy, and Tom as they move on to the next chapter. Give us all the strength and wisdom as we continue to battle this pandemic and we ask for your blessings over all those that have contracted this virus and for those that have lost someone because of it. I ask for extra support and blessings for those families that have lost multiple, multiple loved ones over this year. We ask that you watch over everyone to keep them safe and healthy as they visit family and friends during this very joyous time of year and we ask that you continue to shine down upon each and every one of them. Lord, we ask for your protection of the innocent, especially the children. We ask for the wisdom, strength, and foresight for any and all decisions we make as a commission here today. Please guide us to do what is right and just for the people we serve, and we pray for the safety of those who cannot visit their loved ones or cannot be home with their families as they protect and serve this great country. And we especially look out for those that gave their life during World War II on this December 7th, the day that lived in infamy. With that, um, I ask for, in your name, amen. Amen. And if everyone can please rise for the Pledge of Allegiance and bring your attention to, uh, there's a flag behind, a um, few flags on the screen here. Uh, uh, Madam Clerk's office, uh, 
Put some hockey in, wipers. Do myself a wiper. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America, America. and to the republic, republic for which it stands, one nation, nation under, under God, God of indivisible, indivisible with liberty, liberty and, and justice for all. All right. That will bring us to approval of the minutes for the November 19th, 2020 meeting. Um, can I get a motion to approve the minutes? Moved by Commissioner Jackson, seconded by Commissioner Loops. Any discussion on the minutes from the November 19th meeting? Seeing none, all in favor of approving the minutes, say aye. 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 Opposed, say nay. Let the record reflect that the uh, minutes are approved unanimously, and that will bring us to approval of the agenda. I will call on Commissioner McGilbrey. Where he is somewhere here. There, there you are. And I, yeah, I don't think there is any additional um, things for the agenda. At least I don't have any. You, uh, I believe that there uh, for things that were taken up in finance committee today that are on the agenda. I think there's a suspension of a rule. Correct. That's correct. If we could just get a motion to suspend the rules for the items that came out of the finance committee today, is it the five day rule? I would make that motion, Mr. Chairman. And to approve the agenda as presented, moved by McGilvery, seconded by Zach. Any discussion on uh, moving the agenda and suspending the rules? Uh, to take up the items that were discussed in the lengthy finance committee meeting this morning. We all know who was there. <laughs> um, any discussion? All in favor? Oh, Commissioner Hoffman. Oh, you're on mute, Commissioner Hoffman. Commissioner Hoffman, you're on mute. I'd like item, and I think it's number L, miscellaneous resolution 20582 authorization of a forensic audit of management of county property tax closure. I'd like that to put on the agenda just to make sure if there's any questions, they're answered. All right, I'll make sure. I, item L, number 20582, keep my track of my notes. Um, we'll have it pulled off the consent and placed on the regular agenda. Are there any other adjustments? Thank you. You're welcome. Seeing none. Um, all in favor of approving the agenda uh, and pulling that one item off and place on the uh, regular agenda, say aye. 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 Opposed, say nay. Let the record reflect that the agenda is approved unanimously. And that brings us to communications. And during communications, we have the um, honor of recognizing the service of four individuals that have um, combined, put in decades of work to this county, um, and I, who, who's uh, going to recognize it? Um, am I recognizing this? Lead us through this process. Is staff going to pr um, run through a couple? Are we going to do one by one? Yes, Mr. Or Chair, one by one. Okay. Let um, Let's start with the honorable. Commissioner Tom Middleton, um, who has uh, helped steered and been part of this commission for many, many years. Uh, staff, I uh, kind of move through this presentation and then we'll, uh, we'll come to the proclamation honoring uh, Commissioner Middleton's service uh, to the board. The thing. I believe as you read the proclamation, we'll um, present the um, video portion of it well, we're at the same the time. Okay. Certainly. There's no audio to the presentation. They're just pictures while you read the proclamation. I got it. Got it. Okay. One second here. Are the proclamations. This is the most recent proclamation. I, I don't have the proclamation. Oh, you can uh, find it on page 16, Commissioner. There we go. Thank you. 
All right, I would like to invite, um, I think, Commissioner Gingell, um, if you wanna, if I can bring you up to help, uh, bring you up in this virtual sense. On page 16, the Tom Middleton uh, proclamation, I, I will start um, where today um, we honor uh, the service of Commissioner Tom Middleton, whereas on special occasions, we recognize those dedicated and hardworking public servants like Thomas F. Middleton, who have committed themselves to improving the quality of life in their communities and across Oakland County. And whereas Commissioner Middleton was elected to the Oakland County Board of Commissioners in February of 2002, he has honorably represented the residents of District 4, which includes the village of Clarkston and portions of Independence and Waterford Townships. And whereas during that tenure with the board, Commissioner Middleton served as the Republican Caucus Vice Chairperson and chaired the Finance and Infrastructure Committee for eight years. He also served on the Community Development Citizens Advisory Council, the Reproductive Health Care Special Committee, and the Tax Increment Financing District Review Policy Ad Hoc Review Committee. And Commissioner uh, Gingell, would you like to carry it from there? Sure. Uh, whereas Commissioner Middleton also supported his community through his involvement with the Clarkston Education Foundation, and served as past president of the Clarkston Optimist Club. He was also a member of the uh, various lake boards, Oakland County 4-H, the Oakland County Drainage Board, Personnel Committee, Public Services Committee, the Airport Committee, the Advisory Council of Oakland County MSU Extension, and the Oakland County Retirement Board. And whereas prior to his service on the Board of Commissioner, Middle Commissioner Middleton was elected to the Michigan State House of Representatives, where he served from 1991 to 1998. And whereas Commissioner Middleton was named Clarkston Optimist of the Year in 2008, and in 2018, he and his wife Kathy received the Adult Youth Volunteers of the uh, Year for Clarkston Community Award in recognition of all of their quiet, behind the scenes work they have done on behalf of children in their community. Commissioner Middleton helped create and personally maintain the ice rink in Clarkston Depot Park. Uh, he supported the park's playground and contributed to many other community improvement projects. Whereas Commissioner Middleton owned the Key Bell Farms in Ortonville, Michigan, and has been a lifelong resident of Oakland County. He received his bachelor's degree from Michigan State University, and he and Kathy are the proud parents of three children and four grandchildren. And now, therefore, David T. Woodward, Chairman of the Oakland County Board of Commissioners, together with Vice Chairwoman Marcia Gershenson, Republican Caucus Chair, uh, Chair Commissioner Mike, Michael J. Gingell, and Democratic Caucus Chair Commissioner Gary R. McGilvery, along with the entire Oakland County Board of Commissioners, do hereby proclaim special commendation to Commissioner Thomas F. Middleton. We wish him the best on his future endeavors. Attested on the seventh day, December 20th, here um, in Oakland County. So, Mr. Chair, if, if I may just have a point of personal preference, I, I thought about each of the commissioners, and if you don't mind, I would like to just say I have a lot of memories of Tom, and uh, a lot of uh, times we would discuss the budget, but probably my biggest remembrance of Tom is the 2008-2009 downturn, when things were pretty chaotic, uh, pretty ugly, and Tom was just our star, stalwart on the finance committee, just carefully going through and adopting the budget along with the administration to keeping us in good order. And he did it quietly, but you knew he had his hand on the wheel and you knew that he wasn't going to relent. So when I think of Tom Middleton, I think of just a steady leader. I agree, Commissioner. Um, and I was going to I mean, say the similar thing. Um, Commissioner Middleton, uh, your service to Oakland County um, that spans decades. Um, not only in the states, but also here in Oakland County, that steady leadership um, helped get us through the Great Recession. Um, someone who wears his heart and sleeve and his commitment to community uh, is demonstrated in all your work um, as an issue policy expert in so many areas. Um, the contributions you've made, uh, we stand on your shoulders for the betterment of Oakland County. Uh, the, the, the points that you've brought to all of our attention um, and um, as a result, we are a better county for it. So thank you for your service. And I would like to open it up. I mean, this is a, normally we would be all in the auditorium together and we actually try to look at a way to do it. 
Um, but I want to definitely make it uh, give an opportunity to all members of the board um, to um, give their um, give some remarks if you want to, and then I'll open it up to Commissioner Middleton um, if he has any remarks that he would like to I mean give as we kind of close this chapter of public service. But I know it won't be the end. With that, I will recognize Commissioner Zach. So I want to just. Uh, wish my my best wishes to Tom and upon your retirement you have definitely been this fabulous model for all of us um, it was an honor and a privilege to serve with you on finance and to be at the table as we went through our good times and bad times you've been a beautiful model of how to chair um, a committee and have great discussion and I so appreciate all that you've done. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Commissioner Gershenson. Thank you. Um, I too, Tom, wanted to weigh in uh, and thank you for all your service when you were um, finance chair and you were so diligent in those meetings. And I also wanted to call out your work on the environment and how you worked with MSU Extension, um, how much I appreciated your advocacy for, um, for the earth and, and the natural things that surround us. Thank you, Commissioner Gershenson. Um, your pictures are very small, and if you don't have a picture, your camera up, I can't see you. So if there's anyone else who would like to um, give some uh, remarks, let it be known. Not seeing any. I would like to open the floor. Oh, there, there she is. Oh, we got a couple of people. Okay, Commissioner Taub followed by Commissioner Jackson. Commissioner Taub. Thank you. I think what I admire most about Tom is his calmness and his willingness to let every single person ask as many questions as they wished, trying to get answers. And Tom always had the answers, or he deferred to somebody if he didn't. I really appreciate that. We appreciated that that timeliness, Tom, that, that time that you took rather, in, in helping everyone when you were chair of finance and letting them speak whenever they needed to speak. Um, I also want you to know that I miss your gourds. <laughs> That's true. Thank you, Commissioner Tom. Uh, Commissioner Jackson. Thank you, Chair. I just want to um, congratulate Commissioner Middleton for getting this far in his political career and um, being able to um, retire with dignity. And um, as a as a well um, served elected official, and I want to thank you for the cards that you've given us year after term after term, um, reflecting the budget dollars and helping us to go out in our communities and talk about allocations of money and um, just um, imparting the financial information to our um, constituents. So best wishes to you and um, thank you for your service. Thanks, Commissioner Jackson. Anybody Mr. else? Chair, can I just say something on behalf of the staff real quick? Um, so, uh, um, after Commissioner Cole. Thanks. <laughs> Commissioner Cole. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Chair. And yes, Tom, I really appreciate your demeanor, your uh, down to the farm kind of an attitude, very um, humble, but you know, you knew the budget inside out and backwards and forwards. You were a great student of the budget and a great resource. And um, I will miss you. And um, yes, uh, Commissioner Todd beat me to it. Your, um, your gourds that you bring around, but um, more than, I'll just miss your wisdom and all your experience on the board and just your down to earth attitude. But I know Kathy's been retired for a little bit now, so she's probably itching for you to join her. And I wish you all, all the, you know, it's a wonderful retirement and many great experiences going forward. Right. Uh, Commissioner Quarles. Sorry, uh, Mr. Ward, you're gonna have to wait. <laughs> Thank Commissioner, you. Commissioner uh, Quarles. Thank you. Uh, Commissioner Milton, I, I would like to thank you for your service. And I also would like to thank you for the things you uh, spent the time to explain and help me through, uh, not only here on the Board of Commissioners, but
but we did serve together for a brief time in Lansing. And I learned more from you about environmental issues, uh, especially in Lansing than uh, anyone else. And I wish you the best in what your next endeavor will be. Thank you. Thank you, Commissioner Quarles. All right, if commissioners have um, said their remarks, uh, Mr. Ward, uh, speaking on behalf of the staff, I open the floor to you. Thank you, Mr. Chair, I appreciate this. Uh, I'm not going to interrupt for each one. This is uh, really meant for all four. All uh, four departing commissioners have been just extraordinary to work with on behalf of the staff. Uh, you will be missed, I'm uh, gonna miss your, your work, but I think your friendship as well in, in all four cases. And I just wanted to mention as well that we will be losing 71 collective years of experience on the Board of Commissioners. Oh, wow. That's, a, that's incredible. Um, and to that, I mean, that sentiment, uh, Commissioner Middleton, I'd like to open the floor to you. If there's any uh, remarks and reflections and advice going forward, but we are so honored to have that opportunity to serve with you. The floor is yours. Uh, well, thank you. And thank you for all the kind comments. Uh, uh, Reading through the resolution, I realize why I'm tired. <laughs> and, uh, uh, over the years, I have, we have done a lot, and it's been enjoyable to be on the commission. Uh, and I'm going to leave it at that. We got a long agenda tonight, and I just want to thank everybody. And uh, as I left the state legislature, people asked me, do you miss the legislature? I didn't miss the legislature as much as I missed the people. And I think it'll be the same situation with leaving the commission that I'll miss the people. Thank you very much. Thank you, Commissioner uh, Middleton. And we will miss you uh, very well, but I know that your involvement will remain um, and we look forward to uh, all the great things you're gonna continue to do. Brings us up to our next uh, proclamation. And I'll make sure that they're in the order that I expect them to be. I'm going to be recognizing the Honorable Commissioner Nancy Quarles um, and this is proclamation honoring her service. Uh, uh, whereas Nancy L. Quarles has served the Oakland County, served Oakland County and the people of Michigan as a dedicated public servant for more than 25 years. And on this occasion of her retirement, we recognize and honor her commitment and work uh, and, and hard work on the behalf of her. She's represented as first elected to the Oakland County Board of Commissioners in 1994. Commissioner Quarles has recently served as a county commissioner since January uh, 2011. She has honorably represented the residents of District 17, which includes the city of Labor Village, as well as portions of the cities of Oak Park and Southfield. And whereas during her tenure on the Board of Commissioners, Quarles served on the Finance and Infrastructure Committee, the Airport Committee, Parks and Recreation Commission, the Tax Increment Financing District Review Policy Ad Hoc Review Committee. That's a mouthful. The celebration of women's suffrage ad hoc committee the general government committee and as chair of the oakland county safe healthy and secure election advisory Committee. uh and uh, actually if i can call on um uh, board vice chair marcia gersonson can you pick it up from there do you have it in front of you i lost my i lost I, I, I will keep reading i'll keep reading Whereas Commissioner Quarles is a national founder of women impacting public policy and a member of the National Congress of Black Women, she's also an alumnus of Leadership Oakland, the very first class of Leadership Oakland. Uh, and whereas Commissioner Quarles has elected, was elected to the Michigan State House of Representatives in 1996 and served in that capacity until 2002, she served as the Chief Whip for the Democratic Caucus, Vice Chair of the House Tax Policy Committee and Elections and Redistricting Committee, and was a member of the Public Utility Committee. Commissioner Quarles is a professor at Central Michigan University and a small business owner. She earned her PhD in philosophy, public administration, and public affairs from Western Michigan University. And whereas Commissioner Quarles has been named the diversity champion of the Bloomfield Race Relations Task Force and received recognition from General Motors Affinity for Women Associations, she also earned the Martin Luther King Jr. Award from the Michigan Democratic Party. Now, therefore, David T. Woodward, Chairman of the Oakland County Board of Commissioners, together with Vice Chairwoman Marcia Gershenson, Republican Caucus Chair uh, Commissioner Michael J. Gingell, and Democratic Caucus Chair Commissioner Gary R. McGilvery, with the entire Oakland County Board of Commissioners, do hereby proclaim special commendation 
to Commissioner Nancy L. Quarles, we wish her the best in her future endeavors as we recognize her for her service on this day, December 7th, 2014. Um, it, I, it goes without saying, um, Commissioner Quarles has been a mentor to me uh, my entire public service career. I remember the very first time as a, as a young man getting involved in politics, uh, Nancy's uh, willingness to take a moment, provide coaching, believes in leadership development. Uh, we've had the wonderful opportunity over the years to continue to um, I mean, strengthen our work relationship, um, a mentor to me when I was in the State House, um, and our service together here on the board. I will forever be uh, indebted to Commissioner Quarles uh, for her visionary leadership, uh, bringing ideas to the forefront, um, led from a, a passion of expanding opportunity and equality for others, um, and is a, uh, a, is a determined force um, to uh, improve the lives of so many people, the those that she represented, the county, the state, um, and beyond. And so I am so appreciative of our ability time to be able to work together. And I wish you incredibly well. We, I mean, you, you will be sorely missed. Um, but I know that this is just the next phase of all the incredible work that you're going to continue. With that, I'd like to open it up to, um, like we did before, to other commissioners. I would like to give some remarks, and then we'll open the floor to Commissioner Quarles. Commissioner uh, Gertrudson, then Commissioner Miller, and then Jackson. So, Nancy, we worked together for many years, and I have always valued your friendship and counsel. I've loved getting to know you and your and your friends at your Kentucky Derby parties, <laughs> where my hat was never quite a winner. Uh, I'm a huge fan of your Renaissance Unity Church, where we attended a special service together to honor you and our county executive. I'm so impressed as a, as a teacher myself with your teaching background, and I appreciate you and look forward to staying in touch. Thank you. Commissioner, uh, Commissioner uh, Miller, then Commissioner Jackson. I'll uh, let Commissioner Jackson go first, and then I'll go after Commissioner Jackson. Ladies okay. first, always. Sir. Commissioner Jackson. Wow. I just want to say um, to my fellow Madam Commissioner representing the beautiful city of Southfield, as I said earlier, um, I just really want to just tell you how much I appreciate you, um, how much I appreciate serving along you, sitting next to you in our commission meetings, and just the fact that um, your works far exceed your trumpeting of them. You are very quiet strength about the things that you do. And I think that if people knew everything that you do, they would just, are there two of her or what? I just want to say, I'm just very proud and grateful to have served alongside you um, for the city of Southfield. And I appreciate how you related to me and um, you didn't put my light out. We were able to shine together. And I just want to say, I um, thank you. I thank you for your leadership. I thank you for your example. I thank you for the things that, and initiatives that you had um, planted in our community, like the National Congress of Black Women. I just um, want to say best of luck to you. And I know that you're not going too far. <laughs> I know that we'll be seeing you around and um, your strength will still help our community. So congratulations. Um, for this milestone. And I look forward to um, assisting and helping you with whatever comes next. Thank you, Nancy. Thank you. Thank you, Commissioner Jackson. Any other commissioners? Commissioner Ginjo. Oh, excuse me, Commissioner Miller. Yeah, I already pressed you off the list when I recognize you. Commissioner Miller, then Commissioner Ginjo. Thank you, Chair. So I just want to say, Nancy, I appreciate you, your friendship, your knowledge, uh, your confidence in me. Uh, we've had some great conversations and uh, you just like helped me along this little bit of time we know each other. I feel that our friendship won't, won't die just because you're leaving and we'll keep, keep in touch. It's uh, like minds always stay, stay close together and aligned. So I just wanna say I appreciate that and just your uh, mentorship as everybody else said, it's been great and I can always bounce stuff off of you and you've been true and real and you always kept it solid, whether I was right or wrong. 
So I appreciate you. Thank you. Thank you, Commissioner Norton. Commissioner Gingo. Oh, thank you, Mr. Uh, Chair. I mean, Commissioner Coral, I just have to say my, my memories and thoughts of you are really just, you know, as Commissioner Jackson said, just this kind of quiet leader, very humble, uh, non-assuming, but willing to roll your sleeves up and get things done. And I think about when you brought the Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. Task Force Freedom Ride to the board in 2018, because there was a group that was significant and important and they needed some funding to be able to make it happen. I, as I recall, it was a little like on the 11th hour, they came to you, but you got it done uh, and you quietly went about your business. And so, you know, I really appreciated the way you handled yourself, the way that you worked collectively with all members of the board. And um, I also appreciate your, you know, sense for TV. I remember one meeting, we were going through some difficult stuff and all of a sudden we started talking about empire. So I don't know if you remember that or not, but all I can say is now you're gonna have all this time to be binge watching TV. So so text me, cause I may be watching the same series. I don't know. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, Commissioner Genjo. Any other commissioners? If you don't have your camera on, I can't see you. So speak up. Well, seeing I know I want to come in and raise their hand right now. Uh, Commissioner Quarles, I'd like to open the floor to you uh, to reflect on your service on the board um, and any parting words of wisdom that you can bestow to all of us. Uh, well, thank, you. Thank, thank, thank you. Thank you. Thank you all. I don't know about any parting words of wisdom because as I look at the faces, there's a lot of wisdom here. Um, but let me just say, I have truly enjoyed my second round on the uh, Board of Commission. Uh, I've learned a lot. Uh, I've watched the commission grow and move into some very, very difficult uh, times but we came out as a unit together. So that's what my hope is, as you go through these next few years and making the different transitions, that you come out as a staunch unit together. Thank you. Thank you, Commissioner Quarles. Thank you for your service. The next person that uh, we get to honor uh, this evening um, is the Honorable Shelley Goodman Tom. Um, and so I'm going to start off and then I'll hand it over to Commissioner Gingell. Um, as a proclamation honoring Emmett Commissioner Tom, whereas we are all indebted to dedicated and hardworking individuals who are, have committed themselves to improving the quality of life in their communities and across Oakland County through public service. And whereas Shelley Goodman Tom has a long record of public service. Commissioner Taub first served the Oakland County Board of Commissioners from 1993 to 2002 uh, before being elected to the Michigan House of Representatives. As a state representative, she, she was chair of the General Government Appropriations Subcommittee from 2003 to 2004 and a member of the Joint Task Force on Homeland Security from 2003 to 2004 and the Transportation Appropriations Subcommittee from 2005 to 2006. And whereas Commissioner Taub was elected to the Oakland County Board of Commissioners again in November of 2008. During her tenure with the board, Commissioner Taub served as chairperson of the Republican Caucus and as a member of the Pandemic Response and Economic Recovery Committee, the Human Trafficking Task Force, the Community Corrections Advisory Board, the Job Evaluation uh, Review Panel, various lake boards, the General Government Committee, the Finance and Infrastructure Committee, the Oakland County Complete Count Committee, the Substance Use Disorder Oversight Policy Board, the Youth Assistance Coordinating Council and the Celebration of Women's Suffrage Ad Hoc Committee, and so many more that aren't listed here. And I'll hand it over to Commissioner, uh, to Commissioner Gingell to pick it up Thank from you. there. Whereas Commissioner Taub served the Michigan Association of Counties, she was first appointed in 2012 and then named president for the 2016-2017 term. She also served on the National Association of Counties where she was chair of the Arts and Culture Committee and vice chair of the Human Services and Education Steering Committee. Commissioner Taub was a founder of the Oakland County Human Trafficking Task Force and a life member of the National Council of Jewish Women. She has served as chair of the Prescription Drug Task Force, the Senior, or Senior Summit and Children's Summit, 
the Birmingham and Birmingham Youth Assistance. Commissioner Taub has also been involved with Bloomfield Youth Guidance and Bloomfield Hill Schools, the Chaldean Bloomfield Birmingham Chamber of Commerce, the Business Roundtable, and is a founder of Cranbrook Bricks Legala de Cuisine. And whereas Commissioner Taub has always been dedicated a dedicated advocate for women and children, in 2016, she received special recognition as part of the Women in Leadership Program. Commissioner Taub authored legislation amending child protection laws and for many years has coordinated the board's participation in the annual Pinwheel Garden collaboration with the Care House to raise awareness about Child Abuse Prevention Month. She has many important policy positions and accomplishments under her belt. She wrote policies urging the state police department uh, in Oakland and laptop computers in every police car and established the county's first crisis center for people with mental illness and development disabilities. She also produced a national award-winning booklet about the development of an infant's brain called Their Life is in Our Hands. And whereas she is married to Dr. Steph Stephen Taub and they have three children and five grandchildren. And now therefore, David T. Woodward, Chairman of the Oakland County Board of Commissioners, together with Vice Chairwoman Marsha Gershenson, Republican Caucus Chair Commissioner Michael J. Gingell, and Democratic Caucus Chair Commissioner Gary R. McGilvery, along with the entire Oakland County Board of Commissioners, do hereby proclaim special commendation to Commissioner Shelley Goodman Taub for all of her years of service, and we wish her the best in all her future endeavors. Thank you, Shelley, for your, for your service. Um, if I, I may, I'm just jump in uh, real quickly uh, right now, and then I'll hand it over to Commissioner Gingell. I've been waiting for this. <laughs> um, uh, Shelly and I, uh, I remember the very first time we met, I was 22 years old. Uh, we were up in Lansing. I just got elected to the legislature. Um, and it was, and I didn't know who uh, Commissioner Taub was, um, but it uh, was very clear from that very given moment that not only did she care about Oakland County, she was proud about Oakland County. She wanted the world to know about Oakland County and um, to establish the best practices that we have here and make sure everyone was implementing them. Um, no, no one on this board would be surprised. Uh, uh, Commissioner Taub and I can get into a policy debate and go to the mat, um, but we can always walk away um, reflecting, laughing, learning uh, from each other um, and have always I mean, kept the doors of communication I mean, open. Um, and it's a, a quality that I'm going to, I mean, to miss um, because of I mean, the experience and the dedication that you've brought to all of this, I mean, to this board, um, to, uh, to miss some of our friendly uh, political debates. I just know that we're going to take on a, another form. And um, I value um, our friendship, our relationship over the years, uh, Shelley, and you will be I mean, sorely missed. Um, but I know you're not going very far. You will be involved in all the things I mean, that you, you continue to be passionate about. And so uh, thank you for the opportunity to work with you and look forward to what the next chapter is for. With that, uh, Commissioner Gingell, and then Commissioner Kowal. Thank you, Mr. Chair. I mean, I just wanna build on your comments. Uh, honestly, I've never gotten in a debate or an argument with Shelley. Uh, okay, maybe a few, maybe a few. But uh, when I think of Shelley, you wouldn't win mentioned NACO and the proclamation and I think of what she did at NACO and not only how she challenged Oakland County every day to be better she took that challenge to counties around the state of Michigan and around the you know the whole U.S. and pushed people to be better and took practices from Oakland County and showed others how we were doing things so that they may improve uh, as well as to learn from others and I have to say you know the thing I learned from Shelly is when she would start out with, now wait a minute, you knew that a question was coming. And you know, the good news is that she asked a lot of questions, even though she had a lot of the answers, what she did most was ask a lot of questions because it got everybody else thinking. So Shelly, I just wanna wish you congratulations on your retirement. I know you won't be going away, uh, but you know, I maybe we're gonna have to nominate somebody to start with, start taking over their sentences. Now, wait a minute. And we'll know that uh, a question's coming. Great. Thank you, Commissioner Ganjo. Commissioner Kowal. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, I'm just so afraid I'm going to miss something, Shelley, but um, you are the energizer bunny. 
just listening to everything that you have done is just amazing. And um, I will so much miss your wisdom and your counsel and the fact that nothing got by you. <laughs> Every little detail. I mean, you would pick up on things, you'd bring up a point and I'd say, what, what are you talking about? And I mean, you were just right on top of everything all the time. And um, I will, it's just gonna be hard going on without you, Shelly. Um, I'm gonna miss our, our numerous phone calls. I'm sure we'll still touch base a lot, but um, it has been an absolute pleasure serving with you. And I, I so much appreciate being able to serve with you and share your, in your wisdom and your counsel. Thank you so much for everything. And I wish you and Steve the best of everything going forward. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you Commissioner Coel. Uh, Commissioner Lubes, followed by Commissioner Middleton. Commissioner Lubes. Thank you. Shelley, it's been an honor serving with you. In our committee meetings, you would ask the questions everybody else was thinking. But we second guess ourselves sometimes to say, I should know that. Do I know that? What is this? But you are very blunt without being sarcastic or unfair to other people to ask the questions we really want to know the answers to. We also share some of the same interests. I, I know that you're greatly involved in youth assistance, and that's one of my passions also. So our goal is to raise our children, our youth of today, to become responsible citizens. But they need our help to do that, and you exemplify that. So thank you very much. Thank you, Commissioner Loops. Commissioner Middleton. Uh, yes, uh, Shelley. Uh, there, there's a political term that uh, the devil's always in the detail, and on the uh, budget, you're the one that brought the ruler to uh, uh, finance into the budget, so we could follow those lines across that budget. And uh, we went through line by line using the ruler that you started. Now, uh, this year with the technology we have, uh, we haven't figured out a way to have a ruler to be able to follow the lines. But uh, uh, with new technology, they'll probably institute that and they'll call it the Tob ruler. So thank you very much for your time you've spent with us, Shelley. Thank you, thank you Commissioner Milton. We've got Commissioner Zach, followed by Commissioner Nelson. Commissioner Zach. So, Shelly, I want to thank you for always um, leading on mental health issues with me. You were always my great partner that you care so much about it. And I so appreciate when you helped me on a Jewish Learning Center issue in your community that you stepped in as a partner and achieved success with that. You know, you went above and beyond the call of duty of helping that out. And, you, you know, you've just been a great champion sir, for so many important causes. And I want to say thank you. Thank you, Commissioner Zach. Uh, Commissioner Nelson. Thank you. Shelly Tobb, you have a feisty spirit, and I like it. I appreciate the work and the contributions that you've given, not just to Oakland County, but to, to all over the state of Michigan. And I have to say, I, moving forward this day on, I will always make sure that my punctuation and my grammar is on point before I administer anything. So I wish you the best of luck and I'm excited for you and uh, your next journey. But my gosh, I truly appreciate your feistiness. Thank you, Commissioner Nelson. Commissioner McGilbert. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Shelley, you've done an outstanding job in your many years here. But what I remember is when you were very active with uh, uh, Mac, uh, if we had any conferences that we went to, you were the organizer that got all the dinners together and which conferences were more important than others and, and many other things. So you've done a terrific job as well as our many years together on the Youth Assistance Coordinating Council. So you, you've done a great job and I wish the best to you and Steve when you return. Thanks. Thank you, Commissioner McGilvery. Anybody else? Commissioner Spitz.
Thank you, Mr. Chair. Shelly, I remember when I started on the board back in 2012, um, I was the only new commissioner at that time. And uh, you made it a point to take me under your wing and kind of show me the ropes and show me what to do, what not to do, who to talk to, who not to talk to, and taught me everything I know today about Oak County Board of Commissioners. And then you got me involved in MAC and, and many of the few other things. So everything I know today relative to county government is thanks to you. And uh, I will miss your calls during the day so we can chat about many, many different things. I wish you and Steve the best and please don't be a stranger. Thank you, Commissioner Spiz. Anybody else? No one else. I want to give uh, Commissioner Shelley Goodman Taub the floor. Parting wisdom. I know there's that. There's lots. There's always something to contribute. Uh, Commissioner Taub, the floor is yours. Thank you. Well, I served most of my time on the board uh, when L. Brooks Patterson was the county executive, and I was not shy. Those of you who served with me for all those many years or for part of them, know that I ask questions. That's what I'm asking of all of you, both sides of the aisle. Ask the questions. Don't be afraid to ask the questions. And also, don't be afraid to vote your conscience or be afraid to vote your uh, constituency. Now, Mr. Chair, with all due respects, you forgot what I said to you. Oh, I didn't, forget. I didn't forget. I was going to try to keep it a less partisan conversation. <laughs> no, I told, no, no, no. I told you to never forget Oakland County. If this is where you live, not any place else in the state. You live in Oakland County. And even though there's a pull southward sometimes for some people or northward for other people of, of a different political party, you, you are part of Oakland County. And I think you are so taken aback. <laughs> I can do the pose too. <laughs> yeah. No, no, yeah. Thank you. Okay, and I would also like to ask um, everybody for prayers for one of our former chairmen, Bill Bullard, who has coronavirus. That's it. Thank you, Shelley. Thank you for your service, and we look forward to um, working together um, going forward. That brings us to our next proclamation, and um, last but not least, by any means, uh, a proclamation honoring the service of uh, County Commissioner Helene Zach. I'll start, and then I will uh, recognize uh, uh, Commissioner uh, Kirshenstein to read parts of the pro uh, proclamation. Whereas for almost 20 years, Helene Zach has dedicated herself to public service on behalf of the residents of o uh, and communities of Oakland County, and so on this special occasion, we honor her. And whereas Commissioner Zach was first elected to the Oakland County Board of Commissioners in November of 2002, she has honorably represented the residents of District 18, which includes the cities of Ferndale, Hazel Park, and Huntington Woods, Royal Oak Township, and parts of the city of Oak Park. Whereas during the tenure, her tenure with the Board of County Commissioner, Zach served as chair of the Finance and Infrastructure Committee and the Community Development Citizens Advisory Council, and as a member of the Claims Review Committee, the Drain Board, the Area Agency and Aging 1B Board, the Personnel Committee, the Retirement and Deferred Compensation Board, and the Tax Increment Financing District Review Policy Ad Hoc Review Committee, um, as well as a delegate to the Southeast Michigan Council of Governments. And Commissioner Gershelson. Whereas Commissioner Zach has served as an executive board member of the Energizing Committees for a Healthier Oakland, on the executive committee for the Oakland County Senior Planning Coalition and released the Silver Tsunami Senior Residence Study. She has been a member of the Jewish Federation of Metropolitan Detroit Government Relations Committee. And in addition to her time in office, Commissioner Zach has been a social worker for more than 35 years and throughout her career has been an advocate for vulnerable citizens including seniors and those dealing with mental illness, substance abuse, domestic violence, and traumatic events. Commissioner Zach was, was recognized as an outstanding advocate by the Easter Seals D Disability Service in 2007, was named a Taubman Scholar at the Harvard Kennedy School of Government in 2015, 
and received the Volunteer Leadership Award from the Area Agency on Aging 1B in 2019. Commissioner Zach earned both a Bachelor of Arts and a Master of Arts in Social Work from University of Michigan, and she and her husband, Andy, have three adult daughters and two son-in-laws. Dave? Now, now therefore, uh, David T. Woodward, Chairman of the Oakland County Board of Commissioners, together with Vice Chair uh, Marsha Gershenson, Republican Caucus Chair Commissioner Ginjo, Democratic Caucus Chair Commissioner McGilvery, and the entire Oakland County Board of Commissioners do hereby proclaim special commendation to Commissioner Helene Zach, and we wish her well, uh, all the best in her future endeavors, and there's going to be many, many for sure. Um, I just want to like, like say, uh, I, mean, I mean, a couple words, and I've had the pleasure and privilege of knowing uh, Commissioner Zach for many, many years. Um, her dedication and focus, I mean, to bring her social, her, her social worker experience, uh, her care for people, her uh, relentless advocacy for the, those, those issues and ideals that she cherishes most, that is both part of her faith, part of her person, and part of the leadership that she uh, encapsulates. Um, she's the person that goes the extra, extra mile. Uh, providing the a, a motherly hand at times um, to help support the growth and leadership of others. Um, inclusive, uh, dynamic, determined, uh, and uh, you know, truly has been a force on this commission. Um, and we will miss you on the board, uh, but uh, your service over the years brings us to this point in a, in a strong position going forward. Uh, so thank you, Commissioner Zach, for your service. Commissioner Gershenson. Thank you. Uh, Helene and I go back a long time before either of us were elected, but we had always talked about the county commission. You ran first and won, representing the elected ladies from Hendry, uh, an infamous street for women elected in Huntington Woods. I ran next and we've worked together since 2005, 15 years. And during that time, we've shared weddings and babies and ups and downs. But I feel my biggest gift from you was your toolkit. I still use it. And that was to have a toolkit of things that make you feel good during stressful times. In my toolkit for my garden, exercise and kayaking, I still have it and use it. And thank you for that life tip. I look forward to sharing many more experiences together and staying in touch. Thank you, Commissioner Gershenson. Uh, anybody else that would like to um, speak? Uh, Commissioner Long, followed by Commissioner Markham. Well, I want to say I've worked with um, all four, Commissioner Zach, Commissioner Middleton, Quarles, and Commissioner Taub. And I just wanted to say it one about all of them. They were all very special to me and they still will be. You guys were great leaders. You represented your communities very well. I enjoyed each and every one of you. I will miss you dearly, and I wish you uh, much luck on your new endeavors. And I'm sure I'll see you all, but um, I really enjoyed working with you all. And Commissioner Zach and Middleton was beat us by six months, I think. But Commissioner Zach and I are the seniors here that, well, a lot of you went and came back. But you've been here the, the one big class. We are the last two. So I'm going to be the last one left of the big class. Um, but I will truly miss all four of you. Um, I enjoyed working with you. And I, and I, like I said, I wish you the best. And um, your, the, your replacements have big shoes to fill on all four of those um, um, county seats. So thank you for all your work. Thank you, Commissioner Long. All I've got, Commissioner Markham, followed by Commissioner Kowal. Commissioner Markham. Thank you, Mr. Chair. I uh, very quickly would second what uh, Commissioner Long said about all four of these uh, really terrific people that are leaving the commission. Um, but I wanna specifically uh, call out to Commissioner Zach because I've learned so much from you even before I became a commissioner. You know, I would run into you at SEMCOG meetings or different things when I was working for Novi City Council and you were always uh, happy to talk to me and, and uh, make sure I was introduced to people who could help me uh, learn something. And, and I really appreciate that about you. You're really always trying to make sure we all know what we need to know and have what we need to have to get our job done. 
And I, it's, as I said in finance this morning, losing you and Commissioner Quarles and Commissioner Middleton from the commission is um, kind of intimidating because you all really understand how things work uh, financially. And I also, just one more point I'd like to make is that when last summer, when uh, we uh, had to replace the executive and finalize our budget all within about six to eight weeks, um, you were really a voice of reason through that whole process uh, and helped bring it home. And I appreciate you very much for that. And I wish you all the best in all of your future fun endeavors. So thanks very much. Thank you, Commissioner Markham. Uh, I got Commissioner Kowal, followed by Jackson, and followed by Tom. Commissioner Kowal. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, Helene, I, I will miss you. I will miss your, your calm, steady approach to everything. I will miss your dedication. And it's quite apparent that you have deep personal convictions, and I admire you for that. I know you're not going to just go off into the sunset, right off into the sunset. And I know you've got things planned that you're going to be staying involved. And I'm very, very happy to hear that. But I, it's been an honor and a pleasure serving with you. And to all four of the people that are leaving right now, we've had a pretty strange year this past year where we've not seen each other personally. <laughs> you know, we've not been able to interact like we normally would. So we're, uh, we're kind of on Hollywood Squares here in a way. So um, I hope that when we, and we will start meeting again in person, and I hope when that happens that you will be around to see us and uh, we can see your smiling face at some future board meetings or committee meetings. Um, so I wish you all the best of luck, you Helene and, and everybody. It's just not gonna be the same, but we, we will go on, but um, we will always keep your leadership, Helene in mind and, and uh, Tom and Nancy and, um, you know, so that, uh, and Shelly, of course, and uh, we'll, we'll just carry on, but it's not gonna be the same. Thank you. Thank you, Commissioner Kowal. I've got Jackson, Taub, and followed by Powell. Commissioner Jackson. You're on mute, Commissioner Jackson. Oh, I'm so sorry, you couldn't even hear me. Helene, I just wanna say that um, I'm, um, <clears throat> very happy to have served with you on the commission and you always and i want to echo something that commissioner markham just said like when i would see you at events or we'd be at events uh, public events and gatherings you always took the time to engage me and, um introduce me to people and just it just seemed like i always would be in your sphere um when we would go places and i really appreciate you engaging me and including me um also want to say uh, I appreciate the causes that you stand for. Um, a lot of them I share a passion for, and uh, you will be missed working for um, the seniors and for um, affordable housing and issues that affect people's day-to-day um, -day lives, the have and the have-nots. And so please, please, please um, enjoy your life after this phase i'm sure something else is coming up that you'll be doing that will be invigorating and uh you'll be you'll continue to make a difference so hopefully i'll be seeing you around and best wishes and um we can talk about our grandchildren when we see one another as well thank you thank you commissioner jackson uh, commissioner taub then commissioner uh, powell followed by mr uh, commissioner McGill. thank you you know helene hit the nail on the head when she started the Silver Tsunami, I don't know what it was, organization or group. And I have to commend her for that. My one sadness was that this did not continue. And maybe, Mr. Cherry, you can find a place for Helene where she can continue this because even today we are having tremendous problems with our senior citizens, many of whom sadly have passed away from COVID and nursing homes and senior centers. I think. Oakland County can do better than that. Um, in fact, I'm convinced they can. Thanks, Lori. Thanks, Commissioner Top. Uh, Commissioner Powell, followed by McGill. Um, I just wanted to say to uh, Commissioner Zach, just thank you for all uh, taking me up under your wing. And it's, it's good that you had a calming spirit, because as 
my fellow commissioners know I can be a little dramatic. Um, a lot of that comes with my parents being deaf, though, but for communication purposes. But you took that and you helped me. And anytime I could call you, you made yourself available. And I just want to say thank you for that. And then I had wanted to wait to do both. So also to Commissioner Quarrel, thank you also for always being um, there when I reached out to as well. Um, so thank you. I know both of you will do very well. Well, all four of you will do very well in whatever you all achieve after this or go after. And I just want to say thank you. Thank you for always being a mentor to me, for both of you. Thank you. Thank you, Commissioner. Uh, Commissioner McGilvery. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Elaine, you've been a, a great teacher to me. And um, while I've been on the board, you've done a terrific job as the chairman of the Finance Committee. But I will say that you had a very good teacher, too, and Mr. Middleton. Um, the only thing I would ask, Mr. Chairman, is after COVID is over, it would be nice if we could have some kind of a get together or celebration of the four of these great people that served the county for so long. So if we can arrange that, that'd be great. Thanks. We will make that happen. We will make that happen. Commissioner Gindel. Thank you, Mr. Chair. So <clears throat> as with the others, I kind of thought back about my interaction with Helene over our time together on the board and a couple things came to me. The, the first is kind of her passion for the zoo when we were having issues with the zoo and looking at putting a millage forward and and she came out and said hey listen we got to do something the giraffes i think it was the giraffes are my neighbors and at first i was thinking like what in the world is she talking about but the reality is that they were her neighbors and she fought for them like she fought for fought for all of her other neighbors and uh the silver tsunami was mentioned that was something that helene brought forward and drove and really brought to light the issues and opportunities we have with seniors in the community and and you know her passion for mental health and seniors um when when we were when the republicans were in the majority and we had one spot on the area agency on aging triple a one b board that traditionally always been a majority commissioner spot helene came to me and said listen this isn't a, a partisan issue i'm passionate about this topic i'll do a good job uh, you need to appoint me. And you know what? She was right. And and she got appointed and she did a great job and she represented us well. And I just appreciate her willingness to work together and, uh, you know, certainly will miss her. But her passion and fight for not only the animals, but seniors and mental health. I mean, clearly, it definitely what I remember her for. Thank you, Commissioner Genjo. Any other uh, comments? Commissioner Spitz, followed by Commissioner Hoffman. Commissioner Spitz. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Elaine, I remember all the times we served on those committees together, and we always tried to find a way to work on what we agreed on versus what we differentiated on and to kind of, to try and come to a resolution. I really appreciated that with you and your willingness to reach across the aisle to find a resolution versus finding the negative um, in the items that we were discussing. So I appreciate it. I wish you all the best and um, hope our paths are crossed in the future. Thank you, Commissioner. Uh, Commissioner Hoffman. Um, thank you, uh, Chairman Woodward. And I want to say this to uh, Commissioners Tom Middleton, Nancy Quarles, Shelley Taub, and Helene Zach. And I know I'm speaking for the entire board when I say this. I want to thank all of you for your friendship, kindness, and civility. And I've always said that Oakland County should be the example across the state and the country because we may disagree on different things we may argue but we are all civil to each other and that is a shining example of oakland county and i truly en enjoy serving with all of you and and the thing that really struck me the most i think was the fact that you know november 3rd was the election your terms were up the torch is being passed but you were passionate to the very end, and that is dedication. And I know I appreciate it. The rest of the board appreciates it, and the taxpayers appreciate it. And I, I can honestly say, because you all serve, you are leaving Oakland County a better place than you found it. And I applaud all of you. Yes, sir. Great. Thank you. Thank you, Commissioner. Any other comments? 
Seeing none, I, uh, I extend the floor to Commissioner Zach to leave us with parting wisdom and reflections um, and uh, of all your years of service. So I just want to thank everybody for your very kind, generous comments. I've really spent a lot of time reflecting on my 18 years here, and it's been just amazing. This particular term has been the most meaningful and impactful, you know, with all that we've done together. And I so appreciate all of you. Mike Gingell, you brought up a a, a funny reminder when you mentioned the zoo and I'm going to Bill Pat Patterson when the elephants moved to California and they you know we took away our elephants he always used to tease me about you took my elephants away and I just it, you made me smile thinking about him and all of the camaraderie that we've enjoyed together so um, I am not sunsetting into the West. I hope to continue championing issues that I care about and working with you in different ways. One of the things that COVID has taught all of us is life is precious and I'm grateful for my health and um, want to enjoy it while I can in, the in addition to continuing to serve the community. So thank you and keep up all your great work. Thank you. Thank you, Commissioner Zach. Um, and for to Commissioners Tom Middleton, uh, Nancy Coral, Shelley Taub, and Helene Zach, we are, again, we are so appreciative for the honor to serve with all of you and look forward to great things happening. We do have some surprise special guests. And so I want to recognize um, and kind of like break normal order, uh, recognize our Oakland County Executive, Dave Coulter. Um, who is joining us, who I think wants to make some parting words um, as we, we experience transition on the board, um, but can speak from a personal affinity of having worked with all of you closely over the years. Executive Coulter. Uh, <clears throat> yeah, can you hear me okay, Mr. Chair? Yep. I thought I had all of the meeting apps on my uh, computer, but I didn't have this one. So this is a go to meeting is new to me, but hopefully you can hear me okay. Look, I just wanted to take a minute. This is a momentous uh, evening, the combined years of experience between Helene and Shelley and Tom, Tom and Nancy, uh, especially if you add on experience outside of the commission, is is a tremendous amount of knowledge, and 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 it will be a loss for Oakland County. And I know we have some new and wonderful commissioners that are going to get up to speed and learn their way. Uh, but but uh, I feel bad for them that they don't get to learn from the four of you. Uh, it's been my pleasure to work with you for some of you for 18 years. Man, we're getting old um, uh, in that regard. Um, but I, I truly um, admire and respect all of you. Nancy, you're the only one um, that I didn't get a chance to serve with. I left as you came on, but I knew you from the legislature and I've gotten to know you as a commissioner. Uh, and I've really enjoyed it. Shelly, I've really gotten to enjoy knowing you. Uh, um, I'll, I'll, I'll forever treasure our time on the finance committee. You get that ruler out and just go line by line. And I just watch you like, wow, uh, <laughs> I guess I need to pay more attention. I didn't, uh, I didn't do it like that. But I, I admired your determination, and your, uh, your eye for detail. Uh, and your trip down to Ferndale when we did the, the tour around Ferndale with Matt. That was a lot of fun as well. Uh, Tom, you, you were there uh, when I first became a commissioner. I have a great amount of respect for you. I appreciate the help that you uh, gave me when I was thinking that I wanted to be the state fair director. I don't know what I was thinking of, Tom, but you didn't tell me I was crazy. You encouraged me and you supported me, and I've always appreciated that. And I've always appreciated you, you as well. And, and, and I, I wish you much, much success in your quote unquote retirement. I, I don't know exactly what you're planning to do, but I suspect it, 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 you'll still stay busy. Uh, and Helene, my friend, of course, we got elected the first year together. Uh, we served in districts next to each other and we have really become, you know, more than just colleagues. We were, we really uh, developed a friendship over the years that I treasure uh, and uh, I have lots of things that I can ask you to help do. 
So I know that there'll be no shortage of ways that you can contribute. And frankly, that's what I really just wanted to say to all of you. Number one, uh, let me say, uh, you brought up Bill Patterson. I think about Bill Patterson a lot. I think about a lot of the uh, commissioners, Jeff Potter and George Suarez and many of the people that we served with. But Bill Patterson was the first person that I ever heard use the line, we can agree without being disagreeable. And he had this great way of when things were getting tense uh, and we were getting a little full of ourselves, he would say that and we would all just take it down a notch and, 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 and take a deep breath. And uh, I really, I, I think back to him a lot and the way that we work together. And I just want you to know that uh, for the four of you, even though you won't be on the, on the board, please feel free to you know, keep my number, give me your advice, give me your, your, your opinions when you, when you feel compelled to, or just call to say hello, because I respect the four of you and your, your deep experience and your commitment to this county. Uh, and you know we have a big job going forward and we'll miss you on the board, but please stay in touch uh, and uh, continue to offer your advice and goodwill. So thank you and, and best of luck to all four of you. Thank you, Executive Coulter. We also have, um, we've got a couple of like surprise guests. And so I'm gonna transition to public comment that's part of um, um, this, this day with the agenda, but we've got a couple guests from Lansing that wanted to make a special trip here uh, to join us to recognize the service of some folks. So I'm gonna open up public comment. I'm gonna start with our next two special guests, State Senator uh, Jeremy Moss and State Representative Robert Wittenberg uh, who are here. So. Senator, Representative, however you want to go. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, I really appreciate the opportunity to address uh, the commission. So I represent 11 communities in Southern Oakland County that span across six county commission districts, uh, two of which are represented uh, by our departing members tonight. So I salute all four uh, for completing their service in the county commission. Uh, but uh, Representative Wittenberg and I share a district with both Commissioner Quarles uh, and Commissioner Zach. So I have here uh, a legislative tribute uh, on behalf of uh, the legislators in the district uh, and the governor for each of you. And I just want to read, I know the meeting has, has gone on, but I do want to read uh, a segment of each uh, to honor uh, our two county commissioners. So this is to Nancy Quarles, uh, and it says, there are many factors that determine the quality of a community and its government. One of the most important is its exemplary core of public officials. Of public officials. Commissioner Quarles has been one of those public officials. She has demonstrated that she knows the people of the area, has the courage to make tough decisions, and understands the important role she plays in making Southfield and surrounding communities wonderful places to live. The city of Southfield has been fortunate to have her in its service. As she brings to a close her career in public service, may she know of our deep appreciation for her long service and valuable contributions. It's signed by myself, Representative Wittenberg, Representative Bolden, uh, the governor and the lieutenant governor. And Nancy, on a personal note, I've known you for many, many years. You are, you are my go-to on many policy areas, including tax policy. Uh, and, and, I, and I salute you uh, not only having served uh, as a previous member of the Michigan House of Representatives, uh, but as our county commissioner for many years. Um, and then I will go on to the second tribute to our other departing county commissioner, uh, Helene Zack which I'll read, ability and integrity have been reflected in all of Commissioner Zach's endeavors throughout the years. During her long and impressive career, she's always worked diligently with commitment and the sacrifices she has made on behalf of the community have not gone unnoticed. We join with her husband, her daughters, her son-in-laws in expressing our deep appreciation for her long service and valuable contributions. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, when I was on the Southfield Council, Helene represented a sliver of Southfield uh, and unfortunately, we lost her in Southfield, uh, but I now share all of the communities uh, that she represents uh, as I was uh, elected to the state Senate, uh, where she is uh, an icon in those communities and helped to welcome me in uh, to new communities in southeastern Oakland County. Uh, and I certainly, uh, I, I speak on probably behalf of Robert as well, uh, but I still have your cell phone numbers uh, and I'm going to use it uh, and I'm going to lean on it and I'm going to lean on your expertise. Uh, in the state legislature. So I just want to join in on the accolades uh, to the four departing members and the two specifically who we've worked so closely with over the years. And I'll kick it over to Representative Wittenberg. Thank you, Senator. Thank you. Yeah, Representative thank Wittenberg. You, Senator. 
Yeah, thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chair, and good evening, uh, commissioners. Uh, and yeah, here just to congratulate and to thank uh, the four departing commissioners and specifically two of them, but uh, Commissioner Middleton wanted to thank you for your service and wish you nothing but the best. Uh, and Commissioner Taub, uh, who I know quite well, uh, over the years, we have mutual friends and I've gotten to know her quite well. Um, and I'm, I'm sad that uh, I won't be able to see you at the county, uh, but I know uh, that you will be there to help uh, and to guide us. And, and I'll be reaching out to you and, and always feel free to reach out to me. Uh, and I'll see you when it's safe to do so at the next Super Bowl party. Uh, <laughs> and then uh, obviously to talk about the two commissioners that represent the district. Uh, so I'm the representative down in the southeast portion of the county in Berkeley, Huntington Woods, Oak Park, Ferndale, Pleasant Ridge, Hazel Park, and Royal Oak Township. Um, and Commissioner Quarles, uh, who I've known for some time, uh, is just so well known in the community and has been so active in the community and given so much. I mean, we all know how this is a very selfless and a very thankless, can be a very thankless job. Um, and she's given so much and uh, hasn't stopped. She's, she's already still, even though she, she's leaving uh, the commission, she's already scheduling meetings for me and her and some of the people that are <laughs> makers in, in her commission district. Um, and I know that you will continue to advocate and, and, and represent the people of your community. Uh, so I wanna thank you for your years of service. Uh, and then the commissioner, Zach, um, I know her, she, well, she's known me since I was very young uh, very little. Uh, we go way back, actually. Uh, her daughter is one of my closest friends since, uh, since like kindergarten. We, we were in school together, maybe in preschool. Uh, so long before she was our commissioner here, uh, she was Julie's mom. And so uh, I have always respected and loved uh, Commissioner Zach, and, and she has really huge shoes to fill um, in this community, I mean, she is literally everywhere and everyone in the community knows Commissioner Zach uh, just because she is so active uh, and answers every call that is made to her and she is always there to lend a helping hand. Uh, and so we're gonna miss that institutional knowledge and memory in the commission, um, but it's a well-deserved thank you and a congratulations and wish you nothing but the best for you and Andy and, and Charlie and, and all the, uh, the family. Um, but I just want to thank you once again, uh, and thank you all for giving me the opportunity to speak this evening. And I wish the four of you nothing but the best, uh, and I look forward to uh, working with the rest of you moving forward. And we will get these tributes to you. <laughs> Great. Thank you both. Thank you for making uh, tonight that, that extra special. Um, all right, we're going to continue. Um, and, and Commissioner Witt, uh, well, Treasurer Alex Wittenberg, we look forward to working with you next year. Uh, thank you. Um, uh, we're going to continue public comment, and so I'm going to call on, oh, Aaron, Aaron there, all right, perfect. Uh, Aaron, you can lead us. Do we have any written submissions or anyone in the auditorium or anyone on the phone lines? Uh, we do have three written submissions this evening. Uh, the first one is from Carol Finkelstein of Orchard Lake. It's regarding continued funding for school nurses. Honorable commissioners. School nurses have been integral to managing the pandemic response in Oakland County Schools. Without the nurses' expert guidance, there is little doubt that our schools would have experienced far more COVID spread. While the majority of schools recently shifted to remote learning in response to the staggering increase in cases, school buildings will reopen. Many districts plan to return to in-person learning in mid-January, <clears throat> following the holiday break in a quarantine. The nurses were initially co-funded by Oakland County and Oakland Schools, but that funding will end on December 31st. While there is a vaccine on the horizon, it will not be widely available until spring, and the initial vaccine approval will only allow adults to immunize. Vaccine trials on teens are just beginning. Who knows how long it will take for a vaccine to be approved for all schools with children. We are enormously grateful for the support that you have provided to date. This pandemic is far from over. Our contractual obligations that do not go away even during just to remote learning. Schools continue to incur expenses for additional custodians, substitute teachers, PPE, cleaning supplies, technology, and transportation. We will need your support for the foreseeable future. On behalf of the 29 Oakland County Boards of Education, I respectfully ask that you approve, approve a resolution that will extend funding for the school nurses through the end of the school year. June 2021. Thank you for your thoughtful consideration. Sincerely, Carol Finkelstein, President, Oakland County School Boards Association, 
Board of Education, West Bloomfield School District. The second uh, communication is from David Emerling of Ego Harbor. Hello, I would like to say this tonight before your meeting. I understand that Oakland County does not have jurisdiction over the West Bloomfield School District, but I support a non-binding resolution by Oakland County calling upon West Bloomfield School District to provide a timely, transparent process, which incorporates a fair platform for stakeholder input before the WBSD Board of Education votes on closing Roosevelt Elementary School. Thanks, David and Susan Emerling, very concerned Ego resident and past Roosevelt managed magnet parents, Mariel and Jillian Roosevelt. The third and final one is from Maryland Peludo of also of Ego Harbor. We have been property owners in Ego Harbor for nearly 55 years and have watched with pride as it, as it has continued to grow and prosper. We firmly believe that this is in part due to the presence of Roosevelt School in our community. We watched the Zoom study and were saddened to see Roosevelt reduced to a number and we wish to tell you that this fine school is far more than a number. While it may be more cost effective to close Roosevelt instead of Scotch, no decision should be made without a comprehensive study that includes all relevant factors. Families are moving into Kego Harbor and the draw includes Roosevelt School. What could be the net increase in enrollment resulting from new residents? Please do not make any dis decision about Roosevelt School versus Scott School, Scott School until a study that includes components beyond numbers. Please consider things like historical value, major cross street, pedestrian students, and the promises made when we passed the, the bond issue in 2017. Very truly yours, Chuck and Marilyn Peruda. Those are the three written communications. Uh, the phone lines are open. We do not currently have any callers who wish to speak. The auditorium is open and we have no speakers. Thank you, Aaron. Uh, seeing no one on the phone lines, no one in the auditorium, and all the written submissions have been read and other I mean, comments given, I will declare a public comment closed. I will bring us to reports of standing committees. Um, I know that we're all remote. Do we, I mean, if you can go on for a while, do we need to say, well, Oh, I, did, I didn't do communications, did I? You did not. Yep, no, I apologize, uh, uh, Clerk Brown. Um, let, before we do that, let's go to other communications. Okay. And I, I'm in, I don't want to disrespect any of the communications, but I am looking at the time, and I know we've got a long agenda, so I'll right. do the best I can. Um, th so the first is December 7th to so the Oakland County Board of Commissioners. Ladies and gentlemen, I am hereby appointing following individuals to the Oakland County Personnel Appeal Board for a term ending December 31st, 2021. Commissioner David Woodward, Commissioner William Miller, your confirmation of these appointments is respectfully requested. Sincerely, David T. Woodward. Um, the next is a uh, thank you from Connie Sarogi um, to all of you for um, the beautiful flowers and um, the arrangement um, that her family really appreciate, appreciate your kindness. Um, the next one is from Tom and Kathy Middleton, also thanking uh, for the beautiful dish garden um, in memory of their family member as well. I'm sorry for your loss. Um, the next is uh, dated December 7th, 2020 to the members of the Board of Commissioners, dear colleagues, in March 2019, the Animal Welfare Study Group was formed to examine best practices in sheltering and and animal welfare in Oakland County. Or over a dozen organizations participated in eight meetings covering dangerous dogs, breed labeling and discrimination, community cats, humane pet acquisition, best practices for animal shelters and current practices and needs at the Oakland County Animal Shelter and Pet Adoption Center. With the hard work of everyone involved, two resolutions were introduced as next steps. A shelter assessment of the Animal Shelter and Pet Adoption Center and consideration of a community cats program. Please find attached the report detailing the proceedings and recommendations of the animal welfare study group. Sincerely, Commissioner Marjorie Gershenson, Chair, Commissioner David T. Woodward, Commissioner Michael Slay. Next one, December 7th, 2020, to the members of the Board of Commissioners, dear colleagues. Year 2020 marked the 100th anniversary of the passage of the 19th Amendment to the U.S. Constitution, which guaranteed women the right to vote. In honor of this important milestone in our nation's history, the Board of Commissioners established a celebration of women's suffrage ad hoc committee via miscellaneous resolution 19044. 
Throughout the past year, the committee invited Oakland County residents to learn more about the history of women's suffrage through a variety of exciting programs and events. We are pleased to present the attached report of the Celebration Women's Suffrage Ad Hoc Committee. Sincerely, Commissioner Marcia Gershenson Chair, Commissioner Angela Powell, Commissioner Thomas Kuhn. And finally, dated December 30th, 2020. I'm gonna put my glasses on because it's a smaller font. Dear commissioners, I'm excited to announce the addition of three talented directors to our leadership team. After a thorough independent search and comprehensive interviews process, we have identified three individuals to lead economic development, human resources and management, and budget starting December 30, 2020. December 30th. They each bring expertise and experience in their fields, a collaborative leadership style, and a passion and commitment around our vision for Oakland County's future. And again, in the for time purposes, I'm just going to say their names and their if there's no objections instead of the whole paragraph about each person. Um, so for the Director of Human Resources, Brittany Anthony, Director of the Office of Management and Budget, Kyle Jen, and the Director of Economic Development, Ingrid Tai. Uh, Commissioner, or Commissioner, sorry, Chair, uh, oh gosh, County Exec Dave Coulter finishes with saying he's providing their resumes and look forward to appearing before the Finance Committee. Uh, thank you in advance for your affirmation of their appointments. And I know it's on my screen, but, and that's it. So I hope I didn't offend anybody by shortening anything, but no. moving, on, moving on to the agenda. Thank, thank you, Clerk. <laughs> Can I get a motion to receive all those communications? And they're all in the packet as well. So it's moved by Commissioner Hoffman, seconded by Commissioner Zach. Any discussion? Seeing no discussion, all in favor of receiving the communication say aye. 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 Opposed, opposed say nay. Uh, let the record reflect that the communications have been received unanimously. Thank you, uh, Clerk Brown, for, for catching that. We got lost in the service awards to our retiring uh, members there. All right, that will bring us to reports of standing committees now. Um, first, we have a motion to approve the consent agenda. Is there a motion to approve the consent agenda? Moved by Commissioner Gingell, seconded by Commissioner Lubes. Is there any items on the consent agenda that we want to discuss? Seeing none, Madam Clerk, please call the roll on the consent agenda. Yep. On the consent agenda, Commissioners Gingell? Sorry, yes. Hoffman? Yes. Jackson? Yes. Okendorfer? Yes. Kowal? Yes. Kuhn? Yes. Long? Yes. Loops? Yes. Markham? Yes. McGilvery? Yes. Middleton? Yes. Miller? Yes. Nelson? Yes. Powell? Yes. Quarles? Yes. Fizz? Yes. Cobb? Yes. Wiper? Yes. Woodward? Yes. Zach? Yes. Gershenson? Yes. Is there chair, you have 21 yeas, zero nays. Uh, a uh, sufficient number voting in the affirmative. The consent agenda is adopted. Uh, we'll bring us now to the regular agenda portion of today's meeting. Um, and first up, I'm going to call on chair, uh, a finance chair for uh, a likely a final performance um, to lead us to the Finance and Infrastructure Committee uh, report of the regular agenda. Commissioner Zach. So first of all, I do want to take the privilege of thanking the Finance Committee for all of your hard work. We've spent about six hours in two finance committee meetings in the last week, and this isn't budget time. So um, I'm going to go to the consent agenda item that was pulled by Commissioner Hoffman, item number L first, which is the Board of Commissioners authorization of a forensic audit of management of county property tax foreclosures. I move that motion. Moved by Commissioner Zach, seconded by Commissioner Quarles. Any discussion? So I'm just checking here real quick. I 
see you I brought. I'm just, I'm maybe a little bit lost here. We're in item Q, right? Human Resources Department? I thought it was L. L. No, it we're on the one we pulled off. We pulled, off. It, we from, we pulled, pulled it from the consent you agenda. Right. Right. Okay. Yes, this is item L. Thank you. You're keeping better notes than I am. Oh, okay. All the, I mean, the, the log of keeping track of anyone who wanted to speak. Okay, yes. Item L, miscellaneous resolution 20582. Okay, so first, um, because this was a miscellaneous resolution, I think we do we have to uh, move uh, approve the report, uh, Mr. Ward. Uh, no report, Mr. Chair. Only with no report. Report. Okay, good. Okay, so it's been moved by Commissioner Zach, seconded by Commissioner Quarles. Is there any further discussion on it, Commissioner Hoffman? I think you're the one who pulled it off the agenda, Commissioner Hoffman. Yeah, thank you, uh, Chairman Woodward. Um, I just want everybody to understand exactly what we're doing, and Commissioner Zach will probably explain it better than me. Uh, it's about a forensic audit for the treasurer's office to yes, make sir. sure that um, we've done everything uh, legally possible and we're going to determine how many people based on the Supreme Court ruling of I think July 17th that we're doing everything properly to get these people their money back. But maybe Commissioner Zach could explain it a little better. So we are, the as we discussed earlier, Commissioner Hoffman, the treasurer's office is reviewing all of the cases that have been foreclosed upon from 2009 until July of 2020 and reviewing what the facts and figures are. Okay, and we, okay, and we have hired we went through a uh, RFP process. We've hired Grassy and Associates out of New York that will be conducting a forensic audit of all of the cases, not just a sampling, so that we know that our number's in order and we can let the residents know that our operations are smooth. So that's basically what we're doing. Uh, the question, the same question I asked you earlier this evening was, can't we count on the treasurer's office to provide us with all that information? I mean, it's public record, how many people were foreclosed on and how much they were foreclosed on for. So it's the same fact that we do our own, when it comes to auditing, we do our budget and we bring in an outside auditor to take a look at what we're doing. And so we have an outside set of eyes critically looking at the numbers and certifying that they are correct. And I know that from my perspective, we can assure our residents that someone else with different accounting experience is going to sanction what we're doing. And I think it's best practice. Thank you, Commissioner Zach. Any further discussion on the resolution. Commissioner Spitz. Thank you, Mr. Chair. So this is an accounting firm out of New York that we're using, not a legal law firm, or are they both attorneys and lawyers at the same time? So I'm just looking at the fee they're charging us is $950,000 or something like that for this forensic audit. It's actually an accounting, but there's a whole certification of forensic auditing and experience and they have all those different credentials. And quite, we had three bids, and this was actually the middle bid um, okay. that we and, picked, and there, were, there was a whole committee that selected it. Okay, and just, one, just one final question is, is this forensic audit required for anything legally, through statute, through requirements from any other outside organization, or is it something we're doing as a Duke Air? I mean, I'll jump in there. I'll, I'll jump in there, and Commissioner Zach, if you want to add, I mean, this was, a, I mean, a request of, um, I mean, the over the the ad hoc committee that we set up to look at it, um, to put out the RFP that brought, I mean, took in the bids. I worked with the administration, the treasurer's office, and the board of commissioners and, and corp council in purchasing um, to bring forth this um, this proposal, this contract. 
Okay. Just so for the that, record, I'm not a big fan of consultants. Required but... to do a forensic audit? No, we're not legally required to do a, a separate forensic audit. Um, it has been I mean, the recommendation. Um, I mean, to, to do a very deep dive in part because of some of the records and all this, to make sure that everything was handled properly, and to get a full handle on the um, the, the liability and exposure that the county has. Well, thank you. I just just for the record, I'm not a big fan of consultants coming in from the outside. We're, related to something I think we can do internally or they're going to get most of the information internally. So I'll be voting against this. Thank you, Commissioner Smith. Uh, Commissioner Hoffman for a second time. Thank you, uh, Chairman Woodward. Yeah, I thought there was more to this than just looking at the amount of properties that were foreclosed on. It would seem to me that maybe we should get all the information we've requested that he provide us with the all the properties that were foreclosed on and the amounts they were were closed on for this is all public record i think that maybe we should do that first and get that list and see what our liability is and if there's some concern and we think we should have it audited but I, I thought there was more to it than this and again the committee i'm on with commissioner zach and woodward we did agree to uh, send out an rfp but after that i don't think we've ever seen it. I mean, it never came before a committee because we never had another meeting. But I, I, I am kind of hard pressed to spend a million dollars when these are records we have in house. I think we should get those records first and then go from there. You know, I'm again, concerned about spending a million dollars. Thank you, Commissioner. Any further discussion on this issue? Seeing none. Madam Clerk, please call the roll. On the resolution, Commissioners Hoffman? No. Jackson? Yes. Hockenderfer? No. Kowal? Yes. Kuhn? No. <clears throat> Sorry, what was that? I apologize, no. Thank you. Long? Yes. Loops? Yes. Markham? Yes. McGilvray? Yes. Middleton? No. Miller? Yes. Nelson? Yes. Powell? Yes. Quarles? Yes. Fizz? No. Cobb? No. Wiper? No. Woodward? Yes. Zach? Yes. Gershenson? Yes. Gingell? Yes. Mr. Chair, you have 14 yeas, seven nays. Uh, sufficient number voted in the affirmative. The resolution is passed. Uh, I'll call again on uh, Chair of Finance, Commissioner Zach. Item number Q, Human Resources Department one time 1% equity pay for full-time employees represented by specific collective bargaining agreement. I move it. Uh, moved by Commissioner Zach, seconded by Commissioner Markham. Any discussion? Seeing notes. Oh, Commissioner Spitz. I'm sorry, I read through the resolution. Can somebody elaborate on why we're doing a one time equity payment for the full time employees rep represented by a bargaining unit? Don't they have contracts already in place? I'm just, I need some right. clarification. And I believe this has to do with the equity payment that we did as part of the budget earlier. Um, but Commissioner Zach, do you want to? I know this came through. Well, so we're going to be voting on the compensation study, mm -hmm. and this is because they haven't bargained their contracts in relation to the um, compensation study. We're doing this equity adjustment for the represented unions right now until they reopen their contracts. 
so that there is equitability among staff. Thank you, Commissioner Zach. Any further discussion? Uh, Commissioner Spitz. I'm, I'm sorry, I'm not sure I'm clear on that. So we're going to be voting on the comp study here in a, the next one or two. Um, so you're saying that they're current contract, they're under current contract, I believe, correct? And they did receive an increase for 2020, correct? Uh, per their contract? Often, often their contracts are have me twos in it until they reopen. And so it's a timing issue right now. And so this is the like the me too for their contracts. And, and that's what I'm trying to understand. I understand they have a me too, but right. I believe they were all under contract except for the UAW, which I think we'll vote on here soon, um, for 2020. So they all got their increase for 2020. I thought the 1% equity you did for non-bargaining unit was because they did not get an increase in 2020. The 1%, okay, the 1% was, in in lieu of if we didn't do the compensation study, we talked about in the budget that we would do a 1%. That was the fallback position if we didn't vote on the comp study for all the employees. And because we are voting on the comp study, we're not doing that 1% for the non-represented employees. And this is now for the represented ones so that they are going to be more parallel to the comp study. So the comp study will not affect all the bargaining units that have agreement, if I just Correct. heard this correctly. Correct. They are not covered by the comp study in the same so way. So they will not be receiving then increases, or will they under me too? Well, this is their equitable adjustment right now until their contracts are reopened at the right time. Thank you, Commissioner Zach. Uh, I got Commissioner Taub in the queue here. Commissioner Taub? Yes, thank you, Mr. Chair. So now I'm even more confused than I was before. Um, let me understand this. So people doing the same job in Department A, I'm asking you a question, Helene, because I don't quite understand it. The people are doing the same job in part, Department A as they are doing in Department B, but Department B happens to have a union, but Department A does not. Does that mean that their salaries will vary? Um, and in the past, we'd always given everyone the same raise. Is that correct now? Or do you have to belong to a union to get a raise? Okay, so this, um, wait, I'm sorry, what is your question, Commissioner Todd? What did you, this is I have two questions. One, if someone is in Department A and someone is in Department B, and the person doing the exact same job, same level, same everything, okay, do they both get the same pay or does it vary if they are unionized or non union? That's my first question. So, yeah, I could clarify, yeah. interrupt. I mean, this is this is the one percent you all approved with the approval of the budget for the non-represented employees. And this is a Me Too follow-on for those collective bargaining agreements that have a, a reopener. Okay, so that's what I was if their union uh, gets an adjustment, and it's a ten percent adjustment or a five percent. Does that mean that they get five or ten percent more than the other person doing the same job in a different department? Mm -hmm. No, I, Commissioner Taub, this is a one percent. It's the, the equity payments that was also like made available to non-represented employees. And so this is the, the wage reopener for the the union contracts. Okay, so everybody's getting the same one percent across the board. I'm very confused. Well, we're okay. Uh -huh. Uh -oh. Okay. Uh, Commissioner Zach, if you want to respond, I got Commissioner. So this is a wage reopener 
for the collected bark, you know, for the unionized employees so that they, so that it mirrors the non-union compensation study employees. Okay, so now the union goes into negotiations and they want 6%. Are they granted 6%? So they are now making 5% more than the non-union employees. That's my question. But that's not the question that's before us, Commissioner the question before us is basically extending the 1% equity payment that we did for non-represented to all the uh, represented employees. Thank Commissioner you. Gingell, and then I got Commissioner Miller. And then Commissioner Hoffman. Commissioner Gingell. I guess my question maybe is a little different. So this is a 1% for a union that is uh, a collective bargaining unit, right? And so they have a me too or an opener clause in their contract. Are we contractually obligated to provide this equity increase, one-time equity payment based on our contract with that bargaining unit? My understanding is that we do have this wage reopener that we do need to do this with the unions to settle things right now. And Mr. Chair, if I may, so then if this occurs and this particular bargaining unit or group of bargaining units uh, goes into negotiation, clearly the county would take in consideration this action as part of our going forward union negotiations, I would think. Certainly. Yeah. At all. Yeah. Thank you, Commissioner Gickle. Uh, I'll get Commissioner Miller followed by Commissioner Hoffman. Thank you. So Two things, and if I'm on the line, say point of order or just kick me off or mute me. Um, so this is a one-time lump sum. So it doesn't add to their increase. It, it doesn't add to their yearly salary. So everybody understands that. It's like, a, here's a one-time. You make $5 this, this year. Next year, you're still making $5. You're not making any more, right? It's just a lump sum, one-time payment. All. And then uh, I think it's important for, uh, just to answer Commissioner Cobb because I uh, question because I feel that she's frustrated that it, when you go into negotiations, if the union says 6%, the county has to agree to that. It has to be a mutual agreement. So I think that's where there was the disconnection. But I wanted to answer that because I feel it's important that all commissioners have an understanding of how it works and what's going on so we can move forward with this. Thank you. Thanks, Commissioner Miller. Commissioner Hoffman. Thank you, Chairman Woodward. Okay, so the non-representative got a 1% raise, or not a raise, it was uh, like a bonus. Is that for the year 2020? It was for the fiscal year, uh, Commissioner Hoffman, for fiscal year that we currently are in. And that was part of the budget and the negotiation of an equity payment pending the approval of the compensation study, and which is also on today's agenda uh, to raise the wages for county employees across the organization had we not taken up, if we don't, didn't take up the compensation study, then there was a plan B on how we would address compensation across the county organization. This is a, a extending the equity payment that we approve for non-represented employees to the represented employees. Okay, what I don't understand is, what, what, how many unions are we talking about here? What unions are they? Who do they represent? I believe it's in the resolution, Commissioner Hoffman. Okay, well, I don't have it in front of me. All right, then. All right. Okay, so uh, this is the bargaining unit that negotiates their wages and benefits. So because we gave it to the non-bargaining unit, we just automatically give it to the others, and they have a reopener. Don't they have to reopen it and sit down and talk to us? Or we're just arbitrarily doing it. I would argue this is a uh, wage reopener for the uh, one, I mean, for the 1% equity payment that we extended to other employees. Okay, so if we negotiate with this union and they get a wage increase, then are we going back to the non bargaining unit and giving them more? I mean, this is like a leapfrog, it just never ends. I don't understand your question. 
Okay, if we get Jackie, the unions. Commissioner, Commissioner Zach, do you have any further? I mean, I mean. We still have, to, we're not giving away more money to any group of employees. This is an equity adjustment. We still have to bargain contracts with all of the different unions that are listed when their time comes up. <clears throat> this is just okay, an my question. Okay, Commissioner Hoffman. Go ahead. My question is. Commissioner Spencer, you have a second. Commissioner Hoffman, go ahead. Thank you. We gave the 1% to the non represented group. Then we're going to give a 1% to the represented group. And then they open up negotiations and then they go negotiate a contract and get another percentage raised. Do we go back then to the non representative? match it. I, I, I guess I don't follow what we're doing here. I think, I, mean, I guess in that situation, I mean, the board has to take action on any of those. We have Commissioner Wiper and Commissioner Stiz, so I have a second. Commissioner Wiper. Thank, thank you, Mr. Chair. Along the times, uh, along the, what Mr., uh, Commissioner Gimsel said, um, I sat on HR for a while, so we always did non-represented, and then Brooks's team came to us with the with the um, union represented, and they always did a me too. So they always, in the openers, they always followed what we, the commission gave to the non-represented. So it seems like we got a little bit out of order here, but it, it like Commissioner Gingell said, when it, we're, we're doing an equitable thing, because we sat on this for a little while, a couple of years, and so the, Negotiators will take into consideration the fact that we did this when it does get reopened. Is that my understanding? Do I do I have it right? I mean, Commissioner, we're, Commissioner we're, Zach, we're a little bit out of order. Commissioner, Commissioner Zach is giving you the affirmative. I got Commissioner Spiz and then Commissioner Gingell for a second time. Commissioner Spiz. Just a, a point of clarification, if I'm not mistaken. If you go back to item E, which was the approval of the UAW contract, I believe there was a 1% equity adjustment in there too. And if you look at the current resolution in front of us, I think in the first, which I know in the first, therefore it be resolved, the UAW is also listed there. So do we just need to clarify or clean up this resolution since we already approved the consent and remove the UAW from this one? Or am I misreading the item N? Chris, do you happen to know what page item N is on for everybody? Yeah, I'm, I'm pulling it up right now. Yeah. They're not getting, I can say that UAW is not getting a double 1% increase. I'm so. sure they're not getting a double, and I didn't think so. I just, I'm just looking for clarification of terminology or words since we already proved the UAW one. If this one, since it's still in front of us, we could, we could amend it now and remove the UAW from this one just to make sure they're correct. How about this? Why don't I, I mean, we recommend, um, I'm going to recommend that we stand at ease um, to get some more information on this and we'll come back to it. So, so we'll, we're going to stand at ease and I, uh, I'm going to ask him that the about. Legal term, stand at ease? I'm going to stand, gonna stand at ease. Commissioner Gingell first before we do that. Yes. Yeah, just before maybe we recess to get answers if that's what we're going to do. Could we also get a specific answer on do we have an actual contractual obligation to provide this 1% me too to these particular unions? Um, I think that answer is yes, but I'd love to confirm it because then it makes this a lot easier. The second piece is, you know, is the intention or can we ensure the intention provided this passes is that this effort goes as a positive in our give column when we're negotiating with the unions going forward? because if we're not required to do it and we're doing it out of a non-contractual obligation, I mean, it's kind of a, a gift. All right. Um, okay. With that, um, we're going to take a brief recess, um, roughly about 10 minutes.
coming back. Hang on. You're right. Yep. Okay. Turn the camera back on. Okay. All right. Calling roll call. Um, I, I don't think you have to say where you are again, unless I, I'm assuming you're all where you started the meeting. Um, if you move, you can let us know that you've moved. Yeah, if you move, let me know. How's that? Okay. Otherwise, just stay here. Uh, Commissioners Jackson. Here. Thank Here. Thank you. Kokendorfer? Here. Kowal? Here. Poon? Here. Long? Here. Lubes? Here. Arkham? Here. McGilvery? Yeah. McGilvery, I think you froze Here. for a second. Okay, I think you froze. Oh, okay. Uh, Middleton? Here. Miller? Here. Nelson? Here. Powell? Here. Corals? Here. Fizz? Here. Todd? Here. Piper? I'm here. Woodward? Here. Zach? Here. Gershenson? Here. Gingell? Here. Hoffman? Here. Mr. Chair, you have a quorum. Uh, thank you, Madam Clerk. Our quorum has been reestablished. That brings us back to the question that we, when we took the recess, we were um, debating um, item Q, uh, the one-time 1% 1 equity payment for full-time uh, employees represented by specific collective bargaining agreements. I'm going to call on um, Finance Chair Zach um, to uh, uh, explain some of the questions that came up and um, hopefully answer everyone's questions. Commissioner Zach. Okay. So we sat on the compensation study for a while. And so right now, when we act on the compensation study, the bargaining units are going to be, be behind the um, other employees. And we do have a wage reopener for the bargaining units. And so this 1% equity will help them bring them closer to parity to the cap study. But granted, this 1% is all, it's part of their whole bargaining. And they're not gonna be given more than they're, you know, we have to reopen their contracts and bargain with them. Um, so it's all part of their, what compensation that they will negotiate fully. And then um, in this resolution, we can remove the United Auto, Auto Workers, this existing because they were covered in the other resolution that we voted it on. They were added here just in case we didn't act on that so we can remove it from this resolution. It's not a double entity. So hopefully that explains what we are doing um, here with this equity adjustment. So is that a friendly amendment to remove UAW? Yes. Okay. Thank you. Okay, so the resolution will reference all the other bargaining units, not the UAW, because that was already incorporated in the UAW agreement that we already approved. Okay, and uh, it, it, I think it was Commissioner Quarles, according to my notes, that seconded uh, the motion. So I mean, are you accepting of that um, language, that, that small language change? Um, yes. Yeah. That gives clarity. Okay. Um, and then Commissioner Gitchell. Thank you, Mr. Chair. So just for Commissioner Zach, it's the finance chair. So then I'm just trying to get clarity. Are we saying that this is an obligation that we have to act on according to our bargaining, our current bargaining agreement? My understanding is yes, this is part of the wage reopener with our current bargaining unit. Commissioner Jackson, I second hand go up with that. We just were you just waving. 
You're good. Mm-hmm. No, I just want to go back. I mean, I can't wave. It is the holiday season, but I just want to go back to um, what we've done historically as far as um, handling our union contracts and how we bargain and how we done Me Too. Um, I see the 1% as just a Me Too after the comp study. Thanks. Thank you, Commissioner Jackson. I think I get Commissioner Taub. Thank you, Mr. Chair. I'm just going around like I'm going around in a circle. Okay. They don't all of the employees have a 1% raise already. Hello. May I address that, Commissioner right. Woodward? Well, well, well hey, Commissioner Todd, why don't you ask your, I mean, make your point on the resolution before us, and then I'll, I'll have Commissioner Zach give well, if we're starting at 1% rather than zero, in other words, rather than what the old salary was to begin with, it indicates to me that we're going to be raising certain workers' paychecks by more than 1%. Unlike the rest of the community that has a, I mean, I'm, I'm, very, I'm very, still very confused. Okay. Okay, Commissioner Zach, if you uh, uh, want to respond, except, I mean, we are going to be taking up the compensation study that is, in fact, going to raise wages across the organization. But, Commissioner Zach. So, we did approve, uh, you know, we talked about a non equity 1% if we didn't implement the compensation study. So um, I don't understand your question at this point. This is, we are voting on an equity adjustment for the bargaining units. And then we will, which will bring them closer to the comp study. So if I may, Mr. Chair, to you. Yes, yes. Commissioner Zach, through you. Um, so the union folks are not part of the comp study? No, they are not part of the comp study. Why not? They're doing the same jobs as other people, non-union. Doesn't make any sense to me. That's how it started years ago. Commissioner Gingell, I mean, I mean come Commissioner Gingell. Um, yeah, and, and I might have to you, yeah. for some clarity of something too. Right? Yeah, I was just going to clarify something. So, you know, as Commissioner Todd was talking, <clears throat> we did not increase anybody's salary for the non union people. What I understand we did was to provide a one time payment of 1%. It did not increase the benefit cost or the set ongoing salary cost. And we did that because we were <clears throat> somewhat delayed in implementing the uh, benchmark study, which we will adopt. But as with the non-union folks, the equity payment that we're making uh, will be considered when we look at the adjustment from where they're at to where the benchmark study says they should be and what we can afford. Similarly, with the unions who are not included in the benchmark study, but will be opening their contracts for negotiation, they have a Me Too clause. And because we provided the 1% to the non-union, I believe we have an obligation to provide it to the union employees. And we will, I believe we will use that as part of our negotiating effort when their contract opens and they're going to be looking for benefits and increases and other things. This is why I was asking, are we, do we have an obligation to do this under the Me Too clause of the bargaining contracts? And I believe that answer was yes. Commissioner Zach. Yes, and you very clearly delineated what's going on, Commissioner Gingell. Thank you. Thank you, Commissioner Zach. Um, Commissioner Ward, um, I, I think Chief, Chairman Ward, uh, Chief Ward. Yeah, I like that. <laughs> yeah. Um, some additional information. I mean, I think there, you, you no, provide some additional information. 
we got some feedback from um, our staff and from uh, Lynn from fiscal services through them. Uh, the issue with the UAW is the first resolution you pass through the consent agenda um, references this resolution as the implementation of the 1% equity payment. And so uh, I don't know if you would mind going back and reconsidering that amendment. It's just uh, for clarity's sake, so there are no problems. Uh, it, it probably would be best to leave in that 1% if that's your intent in this resolution for the UAW. I don't think there's any issue of them getting it twice uh, through the resolution, but in the, there's a whereas clause in the first one that it specifically calls out this resolution. That's it. So why don't, I mean, people... So I'm okay with that. You're, you're okay with that. Let's okay. Remove, the, remove the friendly amendment. Yep. It's uh, yeah. and like the board from the bottom, whereas... How about, on the how about we do this? Why don't, I mean... Commissioner Zach and Commissioner Corals will move their motion to move it and their second. And now we go back to scratch. Commissioner Zach moves as presented in our packet. Um, item Q, seconded by Commissioner Corals, which basically keeps the UAW language. And the reason there is is because th this resolution is referenced in the UAW contract that we approved. So that is, I, I want to thank uh, staff for catching that. Notice I'm doing something that uh, we're trying to Well, we have great staff. Okay. And Commissioner Spiz. Just want to make sure I'm on the right page with everything. So, if I understand correctly, the non representatives did not receive an increase in 2020, correct? Mm -hmm. So, that's why we were considering the 1% for them. The unions, all those under contracts, did receive an increase in 2020. Is that true statement or not a true statement? For the what? If I look at solely 2020, 2020, right? Ones with rate, wage re reopeners? Yes, or any of the unions. I, I swore all the unions received all the ones that were under contract received an increase in 2020 based on their contract. The non-representatives did not because they were waiting on this comp study to be completed. So that's why we were considering the 1%. So if that's all factual, I'm still confused on why it would open up a me too for the bargaining units because they received an increase. The non-bargaining did not. So the 1% was to cover their lack of an increase so thus they're probably still getting less than the bargaining unit instead so that's where my the math isn't working in my head yeah, commissioner, if I can, uh, I just confirm with april lynch that's not correct the uh okay the, the collective bargaining unit employees did not receive an increase yet i think if you look at the memo from her after the resolution it, it speaks to what commissioner zach said that after everything is set with equity, the equity payment being equitably shared with these employees that set the table for the conversation with the compensation study. Okay, so if the if the bargaining unit did not receive any type of adjustment in 2020, then uh, and we can move forward because that would make sense then. That's what we're doing with this resolution. All right, any further questions? Seeing no further questions, Madam Clerk, please call the roll on item Q. Yep, on the resolution, Commissioners Kokenderfer? Yes. Kowal? Yes. Poon? Yes. Long? Yes. Lubes? Uh, yes. Markham? Yes. McGillivray? Yes. Middleton? Yes. Miller? Yes. Nelson? Yes. Powell? Yes. Can I, is this the only vote we took? I was knocked off. Yes. yes. Yeah, you okay. haven't missed any. Correct, correct. Okay. You haven't missed any votes. Corals? Yes. Spiz? 
Yes. Tob? Yes. Whitebert? Yes. Woodward? Yes. Zach? Yes. Gershenson? Yes. Gingell? Yes. Hoffman? Yes. Jackson? Yes. Mr. Chair, you have 21 yeas, zero nays. Uh, sufficient number voting affirmative. The resolution is adopted. I will now recognize again uh, Finance Chair uh, Commissioner Zach. Okay, I want to move Human Resources Salary Administ Administration Plan for non represented employees. Moved by Commissioner Zach, seconded by Commissioner Lubes. Any discussion? We've had a number of conversations. It was pulled off the agenda. I think people had their questions answered. Commissioner Gingell. Sorry, I just want to make one comment, which uh, will commend the administration, because in my conversations with them, part of being able to fund these increases is going to come from the early separation, voluntary separation program, the cost savings we'll get over time there. So to the taxpayer, there, there is an off proposed and planned offset to the increased operating expenses in the, uh, in the proposal that's before us here. Thanks, Commissioner Gingell. Any further discussion? Seeing none, Madam Clerk, please call the roll. On the resolution, Commissioners Kowal? Yes. Kuhn? Yes. Long? Yes. Lubes? Yes. Markham? Yes. McGilvery? Yes. Middleton? Yes. Miller? Yes. Nelson? Yes. Powell? Yes. Quarles? Yes. <laughs> Biz? Yes. Cobb? Yes. Wiper? Yes. Woodward? Yes. Zach? Yes. Hershenson? Yes. Angel? Yes. Hoffman? Yes. Jackson? Yes. Okendurfer? Yes. Markham, did you say pass or yes? Uh, I said pass, but I'll say yes. Okay. I thought you said pass. Making sure. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Chair, you have 21 yeas, zero nays. Uh, uh, sufficient number voting in the affirmative. Uh, the compensation implementation is done. It's a long overdue process, but the resolution passes. And I want to commend the administration for, as Commissioner Gingell mentioned, find a way to pay for this long term and bring salaries in line with market rates uh, commensurate with the duties and responsibilities to support uh, recruitment and retention going forward. So uh, job well done. That moves us to the next thing. So Commissioner Zach, why don't you take us to the next item? Uh, human resources implementation of a voluntary early separation incentive program. I move it. Moved by Commissioner Zapp, seconded by Commissioner Jackson. Any discussion? Seeing no discussion, this is and it kind of goes hand in hand uh, as a, one of the strategies to help support the previous approved measure. Um, Matt, seeing no further discussion, Madam Clerk, please call the roll. Mm -hmm. And the resolution, Commissioners Kuhn? Yes. Long? Yes. Lubes? Yes. Markham? Yes. McGilvery? Yes. Is that a yes? Yes. Okay. Just making sure it wasn't a get pass. So. Uh, Middleton? Yes. Miller? Yes. Nelson? Yes. Powell? Yes. yes. Corals? Yes. Biz? Yes. Bob? Yes. Wiper? Yes. Woodward? Yes. Zach? Yes. 
Gershenson? Yes. Gingell? Yes. Hoffman? Yes. Jackson? Yes. Opendurfer? Yes. Kowal? Yes. Mr. Chair, you have 21 yeas, zero nays. This question never voted in the affirmative. The resolution is adopted. Commissioner Zach. Brings us to item P. Oh, yeah. Commissioner Zach, I'm sorry, you're on mute. I'm sorry, okay. I'm going to move county executive approval of a request for a proposal to enter into professional services contracts for strategic planning and an equity audit to improve county government services. I move this resolution. Moved by Commissioner Zach, seconded by Commissioner Lubes. Is there any discussion? Commissioner Long, followed by Commissioner Tubb. Commissioner Long. Okay, um, so in finance, I did ask my questions and stuff um, to Sean Carlson, and I'm just, um, I'm not comfortable we need this, so I'm still going to vote no. I think this can be done in-house, and I realize there's different eyes going into stuff, but I'm just um, getting a little concerned we're getting a lot of professional service contracts. So on this one, I'm going to be a no today. Thank you, Commissioner Long. Uh, Commissioner Taub. Yes, thank you, Mr. Chair. Do you know the, the cost of this audit, please? the equity audit yes sir it's in the resolution i'm sorry but i can't bring it up and i just got the packet with 1072 pieces in it as the meeting started so i wasn't able to read it commissioners listed as four hundred and thirty thousand dollars. pardon four hundred and thirty thousand dollars is what's listed in the resolution and who is the group getting the contract please I know it was discussed in finance. I don't know if anyone in finance can bring it up. Uh, Commissioner Spitz, uh, we'll come back to you, Commissioner Top. Commissioner Spitz. I see it as 1.33 million. Am I reading it wrong? 430,000 for the equity one, audit. And then 700,000 for another, for expenses. For the strategic, for the strategic plan, correct. Yes, the total bill is 1.3 million. So, uh, Commissioner Top. Can you, can you pull up my the resolution? My question was answered. Thank you. My question was answered. Thank you. Thank you. Um, any further questions on the resolution? Not seeing any questions. Madam Clerk, please call the roll on the resolution. On the resolution, Commissioners Long? No. Lubes? Yes. Markham? Yes. McGilvery? Yes. Middleton? No. Miller? Yes. Nelson? Yes. Powell? Yes. Orals? Yes. Is? No. Cobb? No. Wiper? No. no. I'm sorry, I didn't get that wiper. No. Thank you. Woodward? Yes. Zach? Yes. Urshanson? Yes. Angel? No. Hoffman? No. Jackson? Yes. Okendurfer? No. Kowal? No. Poon? No. Mr. Chair, you have 11 yeas, 10 nays. Uh, sufficient number of voting in the affirmative. The resolution is adopted. Commissioner Zach, the next item. Moving next on to Board of Commissioners, County Executive Appointment, Director of Management and Budget. I move this resolution. Moved by Commissioner Zach, seconded by Commissioner Loops. Any discussion? This is the confirmation of our new executive, 
our, our new director of management and budget. I know I want to thank the finance committee for taking time this uh, um, this morning and to interview and welcome. And um, I don't know if you have any further things to say on that matter, Commissioner Zach. Well, I'm going to speak. We had the opportunity to meet all three of these director appointments and they are on paper they are just stellar candidates and they were very they were very thorough screening processes to hire all of them you know for example our director of hr there were different employees there were different department heads they went through multiple levels of screening to get these candidates and i was so impressed with all of them and i think all of finance was too. We unanimously voted in favor of them. Great. And this is the appointment of our director of management and budget position. And that, um, we, I mean, with, upon a affirmative uh, vote, um, Kyle Jen uh, will um, help lead the team, um, which, I mean, really uh, includes uh, helping oversee our. Um, overall near billion dollar budget. So we're very happy to build out the leadership team to guide us in the coming years. Um, any further discussion? Seeing none, Madam Clerk, please call the vote on the confirmation of Kyle Jen as Oakland County's next Director mm -hmm. of Management and Budget. Mm -hmm. On the appointment, Commissioners Lubes? Yes. Markham? Yes. McGilvery? Yes. Middleton? Yes. Miller? Yes. Nelson? Yes. Powell? Yes. Quarles? Yes. Biz? Yes. Cobb? Yes. Wiper? Yes. Woodward? Yes. Zach? Yes. Hershenson? Yes. Angel? Yes. Hoffman? Yes. Jackson? Yes. Hogendorfer? Yes. Howell? Yes. Kuhn? Yes. Long? Yes. Mr. Chair, you have 21 yeas, zero nays. Uh, sufficient number going in the affirmative. The appointment is confirmed. Welcome aboard, Mr. Jones. Uh, Commissioner Zach. Next one is Board of Commissioners County Executive, Executive Appointment of the Director of Human Resources. I move this resolution. Moved by Commissioner Zach, seconded by Commissioner McGilvery. <clears throat> this is the um, this is the appointment of Director of Human Resources. Um, and is it Brittany? Brittany. 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 Brittany uh, Anthony. Um, very excited uh, that we'll be tasked with implementing the uh, the, uh, the new uh, uh, compensation study, as well as overseeing our entire workforce and retention recruitment um, to make certain that we have the staff necessary to meet the needs of uh, residents. So very excited to bring this question forward. Any other questions? Commissioner Tubb. Thank you, Mr. Chair. I just wanted to say that sadly we're in such a position that we couldn't bring our, the new appointees in to meet them in person in our caucus or other than the finance committee. Obviously, they were able to interview everyone. And I just want to state that I think it's imperative, regardless of which political party you're in, to make sure that the county executive or the mayor or the president or the governor has the people that he or she wants to have working for them. So I will be supporting this as I did with last a nomination and the one to follow because I think it's important um, for executive the executive to have his choice. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you, Commissioner Tubb. Any further uh, discussion? Seeing none, Madam Clerk, please call the roll. On the appointment of HR um, Director Commissioners Markham. Yes. McGilvery. Yes. Middleton. Yes. Miller? Yes. Nelson? Yes. Powell? 
Yes. Corals? Yes. Fizz? Yes. Cobb? Yes. Wiper? Yes. Woodward? Yes. Zach? Yes. Hershenson? Yes. Gingell? Yes. Hoffman? Yes. Jackson? Yes. Okendurfer? Yes. Howell? Yes. Poon? Yes. Long? Yes. Lubes? Yes. Security of 21 yeas, zero nays. Uh, sufficient number going in the affirmative. The appointment of Ms. Anthony is confirmed. Welcome aboard. Uh, Commissioner Zach. Next one is the Board of Commissioners County Exec appointment for the Director of Economic Development. I move this resolution. Moved by Commissioner Zach, seconded by Commissioner Gershenson. Any discussion? This is the appointment of Ms. Ingrid Teague, um, who will help lead economic development in Oakland County. We're very excited to build out that team, but we know that there's a lot of recovery work that's necessary. Um, to, and to push Oakland County to the economic, to continue to be the economic driver of the Michigan County. Excited to have this resolution before us. Um, any further discussion? Seeing none, Madam Clerk, please call the roll. On the appointment, Commissioners McGilvery? Yes. Middleton? Yes. Miller? Yes. Nelson? Yes. Powell? <clears throat> yes. Corals? Yes. Fizz? Fizz? All right, I'll come back to him. Yeah. Uh, Chob? Yes. Wiper? Yes. Woodward? Yes. Zach? Yes. Gershenson? Yes. Angel? Yes. Hoffman? Yes. Jackson? Yes. Is it a yes? Yes. Okay. I'm just making sure it wasn't a pass. Uh, Kogendurfer? Yes. Kowal? Yes. Soon? Yes. Long? Yes. Loops? Yes. Markham? Yes. Biz? Yes. Mr. Chair, you have 21 yeas, zero nays. Uh, sufficient number voting the affirmative. The appointment of Ms. Teague is confirmed. Excellent. Commissioner Zach. Final finance agenda item. Board of Commissioners compensation adjustments for elected officials. I move the resolution. Moved by As Commissioner Zach. And finance. Moved by Commissioner Zach. Seconded by Commissioner Quarles, any discussion? Commissioner Todd. If these were normal times and normal circumstances, I know how much Commissioner Gingell and Commissioner Woodward work at the jobs they're doing. And I truly appreciate the effort they put in, along with other, all the other leaders on both sides of the aisle. But these are not normal times, and these are not normal circumstances. In my one of my school districts, the Birmingham School District, we are serving 2,000 breakfasts and lunches, okay? We've got people out of work. We've got families trying desperately to hold on to their jobs if they have them, to pay their bills, to keep a roof over their head, Look at the lines for food. Um, if you look out in Lake Orion area, Orion Township, uh, pardon me, Commissioner Gengel, I've forgotten the name of that organization, but they're serving hundreds and hundreds of meals every day. I'm not able to support this now. If it had been different times and normal times, but I think of all the people without a job, all the restaurants are closed and they're gonna remain so or I don't know, what is it, 12 more days maybe? Um, we've got families that depend on the restaurants for jobs, they're not working. We've got other small businesses 
that are going under. So I am a no on this. Um, and hopefully this board, when things get picked up and get better for the people in Oakland County, they will be able to support such a resolution because the people do deserve this without question. But I think it's very, a very bad time to give politicians a raise and not and not have people able to pay their their bills, feed their children, go to work. So again, I'm a no. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you, Commissioner Tom. Commissioner uh, Miller, followed by Commissioner Spitz. Thank you, Chair. Yeah, I uh, agree with uh, Commissioner Todd. I said this in uh, committee is with the economic times, unemployment, uh, not knowing if it's going to be extended, where member or residents or anybody that lives in Oakland County may be affected by not being able to collect unemployment because they don't have enough hours in this quarter to, to uh, start the next quarter. So if unemployment's not extended, then that's going to be detrimental to a lot of residents that live in this community, as well as businesses closing. Who knows what's going to happen? They may be open now, but by the time next year rolls around, they may not be able to be open. Um, I'm all for fair wage for a fair pay. Um, we, we all ran knowing what we had to do. We, we know what we're doing besides the few that just got recently elected. Um, so at this time, I don't think it's a good idea or good stewardship of tax dollars. Um, that were voted to or elected to be good stewards of. So um, that's my personal opinion. And so I have to vote no on this. Uh, if this was a better time, that would say yes. But at this time, I'm a no on this. I uh, had Commissioner Spiz followed by Commissioner Ginsburg. Thank you, Mr. Chair. I have an amendment that I'd like to introduce. I'd like to separate the two out from the one, two, and three for the leadership stipends, as we're calling them, versus the base commissioner salary. So I have the first um, amendment removes one, two, and three. So I move that amendment. So um, I just I have a turn to a chief of staff. My goal is to separate purpose. them, by the way. Uh, yeah. Eight, 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 eight. Not eliminate, separate. To divide the question, right? Is that the yeah. appropriate motion? Yes. Motion by Commissioner Spiz, seconded by Commissioner Gingell. Are you raising hand for that? Um, and then to speak to it, Commissioner Gingell. Thank you, Mr. Chair. And, and I appreciate Commissioner Spiz's request to divide the question. For me personally, I'm kind of divided on it myself. On the individual increases, I'm not necessarily in favor of. But in regards to the stipend increase for the chair and the vice chair and the caucus chairs, you know, in doing the chairman's job for eight years, I know what it takes and I know what the compensation is. And I don't view that as an across the board pay increase. I see that as a stipend for specific work for leadership roles. So to me, I am, I'm divided between the two and I appreciate the opportunity to have the question divided. Um, any uh, discussion on dividing the question? Commissioner Markham, on dividing the question. No, not on dividing the question. Um, Mr. Chair, just to clarify, it's an amendment to strip that one resolve clause. It's not really dividing the question. It's an amendment to the resolution. If I may, Mr. My intent is to divide, is to separate them and vote them on separate. So is, if I divide the question is the proper the, the um, outcome is the same. strategy, I'm okay with that. And then we could just we won't do that first amendment all right so what's the amendment that we're what yes from a parliamentarian standpoint <laughs> what is the proper way no, to divide Mr. one Mr. two and three and the flat increase for the commissioners does it divide the question or is it different from a parliamentarian yeah, standpoint commissioner the issue is you have a resolution before you with the language in it uh and so the the cleanest way to do it would be to vote on your amendment, which would separate out and remove the stipends. So I, I mean, effectively, I think you're getting the same result. So, I guess, Chris, are there going to be two different resolutions? 
That was my question. We have a resolve clause in this resolution that includes the uh, leadership stipends. And uh, if you want to divide the question, if you were successful in your motion, uh, we would have to remove that resolve clause. So I think the amendment is the cleanest way to handle this. But wouldn't we need a second, a second resolution mirroring this one and then take the other part out of that one? I'm not sure I'm understanding what you're asking, but if all oh, three, all, all three compensation issues are in this resolution. So if you would like to address anything the committee <laughs> reported out, you need to amend that section of the resolution. Interesting. Mr. Whitward, may I speak on this? Yes. Uh, on divide, on, well, I guess I'm trying. I'm a little like, tripped up. Are we as an amendment to the resolution or dividing the question? So I mean, Commissioner Zach, if you want to. So I just want to look at things historically and say that um, we have to um, we have to act on on the um, salary increases as part of the budget, and so we did not do that because we were waiting for the compensation study. So we do need to take action on a bunch of the different um, resolutions, but. Uh, uh, pieces of it that therefore be it resolved. The stipend does not have to be part of this resolution. And so that was an additional discussion that was added into this. You look right. puzzled. I, I think that there, yeah, <laughs> no, 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 just, I'm just saying procedurally, I think that people want to like split the question. One, um, one to take up the across the board consideration of salary increases, one to take the stipend question separate. So I'm looking to guide the staff on what's the best way to proceed. Again, Mr. Chair, the, the, the best thing to do here because you have a resolution pending before you that was reported onto the finance committee is to uh, amend each section if that is your, your desire to divide the question into separate issues because the end outcome here would have to be an amended resolution. So Commissioner Spitz has an amendment on page 1006 that removes the issue of the leadership stipends. And then he has another amendment, I believe on 1007 that addresses the Board of Commissioners pay, base pay. Correct. So then would we need to add another resolution under new business? Uh, no. If, or if you the leadership pay? If you remove the leadership pay from this resolution, it will just remain the, the same level it is now. It's been in place since 2015. Right. But if we wanted to make a change to that, we would have to, uh, have to walk it on under new business. Uh, and if wait you wanted to make a change to it, Commissioner, you just would need to um, create another amendment to this resolution making that change. Okay. So you're saying we can't separate them, is what you're telling me. Uh, well, I think you're effectively separating by the amendments you proposed. Uh, we don't have another okay. resolution before the board right, right now. Can, can we take, I guess my question, so my question, Mr. Ward, is that can we entertain a motion that divides this question and would split this 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 one resolution? No, but then we won't have another resolution. Mr. Todd, just like I mean, we, um, I don't understand why we can't have a, a motion to divide the question. To, I mean, to basically take this one resolution to divide it into two resolutions right now, making the appropriate adjustments to each one of them and having two separate resolutions to do these things. You know, sure. The only procedural concern there is that you don't have another resolution before you. Right. So if you'd like us to draft a new one and you could spend the rules. Uh, no, I'm not asking. No, because this this resolution is taking up two items and it's my interpretation that we can i mean because it's two items we can divide those into two separate things which means that, i mean basically by motion that we could just create i mean by motion to divide it we take this resolution we might need to take i mean a couple minutes and staff to, to draw up the two resolutions and then one resolution becomes two resolutions and we take up each one separately i think that's that's, the, that's, the that's of the if, that, if that's what you like to do you can do that yes okay good right. commissioner gintel uh, Mr. Chair, I was just going to say the exact same thing. There's actually three topics in this one resolution. 
in reading uh, Robert's rules, it says that you may divide or split the question to vote on individual things rather than them collectively. The, the remaining content of the resolution would still apply, but you would just be voting on the, on the actions independently versus collectively, which is what I believe we really wanna do here. Uh, and I don't know if we wanna split them out, commissioner pay, the stipends, and then the countywide pay, um, but you can divide the question from what I understand. Okay, I, 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 I agree with Commissioner Gengel. So let's, uh, let's uh, entertain that. So Commissioner Spiz moves to divide the question. I just wanna, uh, seconded by Commissioner Gengel. And I guess my question, Commissioner Spiz, uh, the across the board raises separate from the leadership stipend question? Yeah, I would separate all three. Separate all into three different things. So we'll have three different yep. votes. Got it. Yep. Okay. For um, dividing, let's divide. For, for dividing the question. Okay. So what is the, um, any further discussion on dividing the question? Okay. Uh, Madam Clerk, um, on dividing the question, please call the roll. Hmm. On the motion to divide the question, Commissioner, on the resolution rather, um, Commissioners Middleton? Yes. Miller? Yeah. No. Nelson? Yes. Powell? Yes. Quarles? Yes. Fizz? Yes. Todd? No. Whitefort? Yes. Woodward? Yes. Zach? Yes. Hershenson? Yes. Mitchell? Yes. Hoffman? Yes. Jackson? Yes. Hokendurfer? Yes. Kowal? Yes. Kuhn? Yes. Long? No. Loops? Yes. Markham? Yes. McGilvery? Yes. Nelson? Yes. Powell? Yes. Mr. Chair, you have 18 yeas, three nays. Okay, um, the sufficient number voting the affirmative, the question is divided into the three pieces. Uh, so how does the group wish to proceed? Commissioner Gershenson, is that your hand up? Commissioner Gershenson. Yes, I just think we should take it in, in the same order it's in the um, resolution. And so it would be uh, it would be Board of Commissioners and then it would be uh, stipends and then it would be countywide. Okay. Uh, moved by Commissioner Gershenson to move the recommendation of uh, the Finance Committee. Um, for salaries uh, for county uh, for county commission, seconded by is that Quarles hand the second, or seconded by Lutz. Mm -hmm. uh, any discussion, Commissioner Top. Okay, so what are our com what are our numbers for our resolutions? We need to have three separate physical written resolutions after we divide it. We just Mr. can't vote on. Air. Right. Right. We're just Air, Commissioner Duke. Commissioner Gintel. Yeah, just to make sure I'm clear. So we, we've divided the question. The resolution content remains consistent for all three questions that we are now voting on. The first question is the language in the now therefore be resolved clause in the resolution that says 1% for commissioners, um, all members of the board effective at the commencement of the new term 
one and a half at the beginning of FY 2022? That's the first question per Commissioner Gershenson's comments, I believe. Correct. That is correct. Commissioner, Commissioner Zach, followed by Commissioner Marco. So historically, we vote on, we cannot vote on our own um, commissioner salaries during the term in which we serve. We do it the term before. And it is never comfortable for elected officials to vote on a pay increase. So what we have done historically is that we've tried to stick with the compensation of the other employees. So this compensation study has an average pay increase of 3.16% for employees. And so looking at this 1% and then 1.5%, we are definitely recommending under the average compensation um, for, in, for the employees. And so basically historically we've done a me too. And this is close to the V2, it's actually less than that. And there's a very small increase for next year and you know another you know smaller increase the following year when things should be more stable after COVID. So that's how we got to these numbers. Thank you, Commissioner Zach. Commissioner Marco. Thank you, Mr. Chair. <clears throat> um, I know that it's not popular to talk about giving raises to ourselves uh, and totally recognizing the issue of the pandemic uh, and all of the costs associated with this. But we do our budgeting over a three year period. Um, and these are real jobs. These are not, uh, I think everybody on this commission to a person has worked very, very hard this year and will continue to work hard, those of us that remain next year. And as Commissioner Zach said, we're not actually raising our own salaries, we're raising the salaries of the future board. And, and uh, so this is the only time we can consider compensation for ourselves uh, going forward. I, um, I think it's important that we recognize the job, not just, you know, that we're in it, anybody could be in these jobs and I think that they deserve reasonable compensation, a reasonable cost of living kind of increase, which this 1% basically would be. Uh, and we are trying to be uh, very prudent under and stay under what the employees across the board in the county are getting at their 3% plus uh, with the compensation study. So I am in support of a reasonable small increase for the uh, commission and I will be voting yes for this part of it. Thank you. Um, Commissioner Middleton. Uh, yes, uh, in committee, I voted uh, uh, for this resolution at one four, at 1% one and one and a half. But as the discussion goes on and uh, I've changed my mind, uh, we spent 1.4 million uh, for school nurses. We spent uh, 67,000 for uh, the clerk's union. Mm -hmm. uh, I just uh, feel that we've been spending way too much money uh, and uh, that we shouldn't be giving ourselves the raise. So mm -hmm. thank you. Commissioner Spiz, followed by Commissioner Miller and then Commissioner Tal for a second time. Thank you, Mr. Chair. I have another amendment that's in your packet to change the percentage from one and one and a half to one and one. I move that. I move that amendment. Moved by Commissioner Spiz. Is there a second? Is there a second? I do not see a second. The amendment mm -hmm. dies for lack of support. Uh, Commissioner Miller, then Commissioner Top. Thank you, Chair. So I, 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 I hear what uh, Commissioner Middleton's saying, and I was going to say this before he spoke, which I agree. We have the perfect opportunity 
in this economic times to create a position in Oakland County. So the raises that we're giving out that uh, are voted on here could be an opportunity to have a full-time employee, whether it's another analyst, whether it's you know something else in the county. This is a good good example of uh, you know good stewardship and creating jobs when there is no jobs out there. Um, so that's uh, I'll be voting no on this. Thank you, Commissioner Top for a second time. Thank you. You know I keep thinking about that one percent that the single mother doesn't have for her car payment, or the one percent she doesn't have for rent, or the one percent she doesn't have for groceries or for food. In 2009 and 10, this board cut their salaries as did every other person in the entire county. And I believe the amount was 10%, am I correct? Some people who, are, I don't remember the percentage. My goodness gracious, we're in just as desperate of a time as we were then, except it's even worse because people have no jobs, not even part-time jobs, not even McDonald jobs, not even Wendy's jobs, and they certainly aren't making $15 an hour. You know how much they're making an hour? Nothing. So I cannot support this. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Commissioner Topp, I guess I want to like weigh in. Um, and Commissioner Topp, you brought up a very good point. I mean, the practice of this county and the practice of